Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 47. Now, this episode is just another example of my uh, my theory that the creature department at Pinewood Studios in London is populated with the greatest people in the world. This episode uh, is details, apart from having uh, the coolest name ever and one of the best laughs I've ever heard. Uh, he's just such a fun, passionate talented person uh and it was such a good time talking to him uh obviously because this is the longest podcast i've ever recorded um d is is just so much fun he has some of the greatest stories but one of the things that d has that very very few people have uh is experience in a very very popular boy band d was in a band called emanate in the 90s and i remember emanate uh, they're, I mean, it's just such 90s goodness. I highly recommend you check out their music video, uh, any of them. But I've got a little something for you holds a special place in my heart. Um, but, I mean, he toured with Janet Jackson. He auditioned for MC Hammer. Uh, they were One of their songs was in the Bad Boys soundtrack. That's right, Bad Boys with Will Smith. Uh, and he just has the greatest, craziest stories ever. And that was before he even started like professionally acting and then getting involved in Star Wars. And his stories in Star Wars are just amazing. Uh, so I just, this was such a good time. Uh, we talked about splitting this episode up uh, because it's so long. But I know a lot of you guys uh, go on commutes and stuff, so you enjoy the longer episodes. And also, I want you guys to get a feel of how cool and genuine and passionate D is. And uh, so I just decided to give you the full, the full interview all at once. Um, D's the best. He's really one of us, guys. Uh, throughout this interview, he one of my one of the things that I love about him is he's very quick to give credit to everyone involved, um, which can sometimes be rare in the entertainment industry. Uh, but also, D has a he has the visual dictionaries right next to him, and if he wants to find out who a character is, he checks it really quick, and uh, it just made my heart so happy, uh, just to know that you know everyone who's making these movies, uh, they're they're us as well. You know, they love this stuff as much as we do. And it's just really cool uh, to, to, to see or hear, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you're going you're gonna to love this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking because it's already a super long uh, podcast. But uh, let me know what you think when it's over. Um, until then, enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 47 with details. Theme song time. today i'm doing just fine good doing good. very well well thanks right on right on you're in london yes i am ah um i'm in harrow northwest london oh right on i i was there and i stayed in hammersmith yes yes it's uh i say it's just down the road but it's a <laughs> trek by by the tube yeah nothing Hammers- n- nothing's down the road in london no, <laughs> there are no roads in London. It's just I had a I had a guy on uh, a few episodes ago. By the time this releases, and he explained the roadmap of London as like a cracked windshield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's, exa- so. that's exactly how it looks. There's no left and right turns. It's like diagonal, and it's amazing. It's amazing. People like cab drivers. They're like, sure, yeah, I can get you there, without even looking at signs. That's right. That's right. But it's kind of like one of those things where I think it was in the lot. It's been in the last twenty years. Um, a lot of the streets and a lot of the roads have turned into one-way systems. Ah, uh, yes. Which so is... it's so it's messing with traffic a great deal. Yeah. It ups the difficulty even more. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Are you Are you from there? I'm. I'm. Hang on. I'm. Uh... Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm. I was born 
in northwest London again in yeah in in Paddington somewhere yeah Paddington grew up in Kilburn moved to Harlesden yeah and then and then and then straight across to to Harrow right on right on. <laughs> what was that like growing up you moved a bit um yeah it was good but it's one of those things where at the time it would it was like um it'd be considered tough mm-hmm. to be growing up uh as a little black boy in those areas because i remember it was just i was just at a party the other weekend on the weekend and it was um we <laughs> yeah we were we were talking about how how i had to walk a certain way you know sure. just just to fit and so it was that walk with a limp and a, it was like a skip and a walk and a skip and a walk and you know and sure, um, sure. you know and just thinking well my life really wasn't going in the right direction mm-hmm. you know at that age and if i hadn't moved to harrow um i yeah heaven knows heaven knows yeah where my career would be <laughs> sure sure so that's it that's pretty just, interesting uh, yeah, you just look at you just look at your your life experiences as 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 children or as a, as a child, and they think, well, if I had stayed in that area, it's like when your family move and you have to go, and you're like, but what about my friends? And you know, and then you end up where you are today, and you're like, well, I'm I'm grateful to be where I'm at today. Of course. But what would have happened if I had stayed back there? Sure, I I agree the same thing. Especially like I grew up in a really bad neighborhood, and I see a lot of people that I grew up with became products of their environment. So that's another thing is like, you know, once you, when you can get out, at least you can mentally get out as well, you know, because some people can't. It's so strange. Well, it's one of those things. It's, it's kind of like you do what you need to do to survive. For sure. And then, and then within that, it's whether you have a game plan, you know, of getting out. Of course. <laughs> you know? Of course. And, 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 it's, and it's never that clear. And it's never that obvious, you know, it's never that black and white. And, sure. um, and I didn't, you know, it was, it wasn't whether it was considered right or wrong or laughed at or not. But when I was a kid and I thought, you know what, I, I like this acting thing, <laughs> you know, and I was 10, sure. you know, I was, you know, I like this acting thing. I'm, I didn't know I could remember dialogue like that, you know, and, um, and then your, your wants and desires for that you know fit into play when when you when you start moving away from those kinds of areas and and whether it's because you think like that that gets you out or whether it's um the fact that it makes you more attuned to the opportunities to want to get out um but not even looking at it like that it's just like oh i want to do that i want to do that i want to do that so even from going to college and and university and 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 so on you're aiming for somewhere that sure. that is technically taking you away possibly absolutely you know but but in my case yeah it totally did and it sounds like it it took you out of yours as well that's right that's right that's funny at 10 at 10 i i i went i used to work at this job where uh, i actually sold like high end cutlery <laughs> and they would have these right. like oddly motivational like conferences and it, uh, it was obviously like <laughs> you know you can do anything you put your mind to it. and we're like yeah and then you're like we're you just we're just selling cool. knives <laughs> 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 so but there were some nuggets that i took away and one of the things he said was like statistically speaking the more pinpointed your goal is the higher percentage of it coming true is as opposed to like right. i just want to be successful because success could mean anything but if you have a specific goal and focus and add that with drive and you can pull yourself out and be anything you want to be. So at 10, Absolutely. at 10, you, you wanted to be an actor. And then, uh, <laughs> you know what I want to talk about with you details? First off, yeah. you have the coolest name I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> For details, do you, uh, please, you please tell me you've somehow <laughs> capitalized on it. That is my name. You, being be, <laughs> being an actor, you know, it's, you can say I'm all about the details, and then uh. <laughs> no, well, they know my name, so I don't need to say that. <laughs> Ooh, it's even better. That's even that's even better. They'd be like, I know a guy who's literally all about the details. Like, oh, what's his name? <laughs> details. And I would I would hire you on the spot. I don't even care what it is, construction <laughs> or performance. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm with you. you My last much. name is Thank Balance you. with two L's. So I'm right. con- I'm constantly trying to figure out a way to make puns out of it. It's like, does your project <laughs> need more balance? I'm the guy. But then I feel like I'm letting myself down every time I trip. I'm like, this is just horrible. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe, maybe it's something internal that, That's tell, right. that tells you the <laughs> internal balance, you know, of mind and presence, possibly. That's right. You know, and you fool everybody a bit like Clark Kent. Exactly, exactly. I'm, a, I'm, I'm secretly a Zen master who've achieved inner balance. I'm, uh-huh. the, I'm the balance to the force D is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I can believe that. I can believe that. <laughs> so at 10, you decide you want to be an actor. And uh, I want to talk about Emanate because I know who they oh, are. Wow. <laughs> this, oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's, it's not getting enough talk talk on the circuit, my no, friend. No, <laughs> no, no. It's, it's something that's um, come and gone. It's kind of like referring to, to something like saying – do you remember when you used to ride your BMX when you were a kid? That's right. It, it, it's, like, it's like going back there for me, you know, and it was a um, it was a time when the UK had its own string of um, R&B pop bands. Uh, I, I'm trying to think that you, what your equivalent would have been um, at the time, maybe New Edition or something like that a bit later on for their last album. Right. But... Uh, we were kind of like on on that kind of vibe, and in 1995, oh my goodness, it's uh, yeah, you're taking me back now. Yeah, welcome to the wow. interesting podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I the second I was like details, like I've heard this before, and then I just heard in my head, I've got a little something for you, and I was like, oh my god, it's it's emanate. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, thank you. It's um. How did that come to be? How do you start a boy band? <laughs> With a lot of ambition. Fair. You know, Fair. And, 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 and and big dreams because nothing is guaranteed. You just go out there on a wing and a prayer um, just based on the fact that um, you, you all enjoy the same kinds of music. Mm-hmm. Um, you all go to the same um, uh, R&B clubs and dance the same way. Um, I like the same style, dress the same same way in um and not necessarily in all the same clothes but we would do that uniformly um as a band sometimes but uh you know you just kind of click and i was i was at my cousin's friend's birthday party at a nightclub called the fridge in brixton Mm -hmm. and um i uh, i was just dancing away or whatever you know and um I was really into Bobby Brown and MC Hammer at the time. Sweet. And that was the scene going from New Jack, Swing and R&B and all that kind of stuff with Teddy Riley into P. Diddy. We're taking a history lesson right yes, now. Yes, we are. <laughs> That's what my show is, man. You know, we were we were all about that. And Guy and Teddy Riley, it was, that was where we were at. Um, and so when you went to a nightclub, that's how we were dancing. Mm -hmm. um to a certain degree and this guy was just dancing behind me and then and then i didn't really use the battle (laughs) you were in a dance dance battle d don't put it like that keep it (laughs) as long as you won i've seen honey this stuff is real (laughs) this is stuff of legend Lord, that's right <laughs> uh, well you know and i was just like i always played it cool so my my the way i would take on a dance battle is i wouldn't even turn around i just carry on dancing away until the person got bored or realized they just can get, couldn't keep up yeah there you <laughs> right. go. That's, that's the best way <laughs> you know um and um you know you know you'd be slaying it when you did it at a time that's right but i <laughs> I was in the process of doing that, and instead of <laughs> instead of the guy just dancing and walking away or whatever and stuff like that, halfway through he just taps me on my shoulder and says, "My name is G. Um, I'm a singer. Uh, do you dance or do you rap and stuff like that?" And I said, "Yeah, well, I do a bit of both." <laughs> <laughs> you just right. pull a microphone out of your pocket. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, and. The connection was made there. Um, 
with one of the band members who went on to become G-Man. And he, uh, we did a couple of shows where I had another friend of mine, Donna Vern, and we would dance for, for G when he was doing, as a solo artist. And then he told me about this friend of his um, that lived um, not too far away from him in Slough called um, Kay and um, said it, um, he was a singer, songwriter, producer. He did all of the above <laughs> and um, was thinking about starting a band. Would you be interested in being a part of it? And um, I was just thinking what my role could be at that time because you're just thinking, well, we're into Guy, maybe I could be a bit more like um, Damon and Guy or something like that and sure. do a few rap and handle the dance routines and all that kind of stuff. And um, then I said, I said, yeah, sure. Excuse me. And then, um, and then I think there was a big gap. Um, I ended up having an audition for MC Hammer out in Oakland, California. What? And um, yeah. <laughs> Um, just just and, casually, uh, you know, as you do. <laughs> no, no, but you're asking you're asking me to cont- com- compact a lot into this this podcast. If you don't if you don't care about time, we can go there. I do not care about time. <laughs> the last one I did was like two hours, <laughs> so I'm not saying this goes that long. That's up to you. <laughs> but as if you have no time constraints, neither do I, friend. Uh, hang on a second. Of Let course. me just turn off my phone. <laughs> Yeah, you just heard that. that is <laughs> You're already my favorite person, D. <laughs> if you weren't already, <laughs> you definitely are now. It's okay. All of my tones are as well. My my notification tone on my phone for like texts and things is the chime yeah. when you walk under the Star Tours ride at Disney. <laughs> oh, I haven't even heard that. Oh, deep dives, my friend. Deep dives. <laughs> um, my notification tone is R2D2 laughing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, we'll get right. into Star Wars, but the fact that I have a I have a boy band legend here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Where were we? Where we were, were at, we? Uh, you know, just the casual everyday uh, audition for MC Hammer. <laughs> right. Okay. So, wow, wow, wow. Okay, to go back, I was working as a steward at Wembley Arena and Wembley Stadium. Oh, right on. And... And um, you got to take people to their seats and stuff like that and stand there and just watch the show. Yeah. And um, Mm -hmm. with the stadium, I was part of a football club called um, A to Z Sports World. And they had a bar at the stadium where we'd sell hot dogs and pies and beer and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when the match or the concert started, they would let us out to go and see it. Sure. And the parents and the parents would carry on at the bar. Right, so um, at the arena now, I got to see, oh wow, 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 I'm blowing my, my own mind. <laughs> I got, I got to see Prince um, on his new tour nine times. What? What? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, just Prince. I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, yeah. Prince. Yeah, 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 Dude, yeah, yeah. how was that? <laughs> wow. The, the same way I'm, I'm trying to find the words to talk about Prince is kind of like the same way we'll discover how I find it hard to talk about Star Wars from time to time. Sure. But it was it was incredible. This is the you know this was the tour where he performed Party Man and Bat Dance and Thieves in the Temple. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, uh, that's where I I I I I saw a complete show with a concert a consummate artist, an absolute <laughs> genius on stage. Sure. And the show the show was so on it. And he had the Game Boys with him dancing behind for for um twenty three positions in a one night stand and and um uh, oh, it, yeah. And and oh so to get past that, I need to get past that if I can. <laughs> um but I got to see things like that and Anita Baker um, blew my mind. I didn't realize how how much in love with this woman and her performance I was until one of the stewards said to me, um, "Are you okay?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah." And he says, yes. "I said why?" He said, "You were just stood there with your mouth open for the whole concert." <laughs> this this woman was incredible. Um, 
yeah, and so uh, so eventually Hammer Hammer came, you know, and that was after Janet had come with Rhythm Nation and Bobby Brown had come um, with his um, prerogative tour um, or Don't Be Cruel tour, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're getting a we're getting a sense of the of the era here now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so in 1991 or 1990, um, MC Hammer came over with a Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him tour. Mm-hmm. Um, I was uh, struggling as a as a dancer to get work and get contracts because that was the only route I had to try and get an equity card so I can go to castings as an actor. Ah, okay. You know, you know so um, I I I had gotten my um, diploma in performing arts and and was out there trying to become an actor and couldn't go to the castings because you needed an equity card to have the car- have um have a casting and he needed uh, contracts um, to get an equity card and he couldn't get contracts without getting the castings. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, the, but, but, the, but the loophole was if he could dance, then fine, fair enough. If you pick up the contracts that way um, and, you, and you needed, um, I think it was nine contracts at the time. Okay. And, um, and yeah, so I was on, on route to doing that. So, I had danced for people like Gwen Guthrie when she sang, ain't nothing going on but yeah. the rest. Yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. And, and um, <laughs> I don't, I don't even ask me how that happened because I don't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, so yeah, so I was, I was doing that. And at the time, Snap had come out with I've Got the Power. And you had these two dancers there, Hudson and Dean, in their, in their suits and their red shoes. And, that was the style for the UK, and right. that was what was acceptable. Me bringing Bobby Brown, MC Hammer, um, West Coast um, style of dancing and, and all that kind of stuff, this country wasn't there yet. Right. So I, so I was struggling, um, and only when American artists came over did I even stand a chance. Sure. Um, but um, uh, when Hammer came over, their wardrobe was below um, the stage and to the left of the stage, if you looked at the stage. So it was under a lot of the seating. Sure. Uh, just getting a drink. Yeah. Um, so, um, and so um, we were, when we had to sign out, we had to walk past his wardrobe, <laughs> which, which was what? extensive. Which was extensive, sure. you know. You know, he might decide he wants to wear the purple and cerise outfit, you know, and it's like, okay, well, that's you know, that's uh, that's all I can, yeah, uh, 52. <laughs> okay, you know, parachute pants you know? now, <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on, it's hammer time, that's right. So, um, so, um, I as I kept doing that, I got to know the wardrobe, um, mistress, I think her name was Robin at the time. Mm-hmm. And she was dating one of the um, backing singers. Uh, there were two twins, Stacy and Tracy. That's and awesome. um, yeah, um, the <laughs> coolest guys. I can't remember which one she was dating, but um, I got talking to her, and she said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you would fit. You would fit right in." <clears throat> and so, um, uh, let me introduce you to my boyfriend. So, at some point, I met. Trace or Stacy, mm-hmm. I think it was Trace, um, and um, and he said, yeah, yeah, you should come out to you should come out to Oakland and and have an audition. You yeah, you fit right in. You've got the right look and everything. And at the time, if you haven't seen my image from uh, the M and Eight days, you'll know that I had a, a a clean fade up, and then I had a little flat top which was kind of wavy and um, a lot of holding gel so it didn't move. And then I had these. <laughs> And I had these two tiny little ponytails, one above the other, that were the same as like MC Hammer's tail ponytails. It's gold. So, <laughs> it's gold. It, you know, I was, I was, I was into Funkadelic too at the time. So, so that's that's all I need to say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, um, George Clinton and especially Bootsy. So, you know, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down on the one. So that's right. So, so, so you know. That's what they were talking about in terms of me having the look and fitting right in. And, um, yeah, I stayed in touch with Robin and uh, an audition was arranged. And I flew out to 
Oh, I think I flew out to New York and visited my uncle for um, a few days or something like that. And then I flew to Oakland, California. And um, uh, Robin, Robin came and picked me up from the airport um, that evening. Um, I slept on the couch and she and she drove me to the studios the next morning. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, you know, and, um, yeah, and I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I was wearing, right, from when I was saying I was working at the um, Wembley Arena, uh-huh. they used to have these, they used to have these um, beer, um, I don't know if I can say the name of the brand, but they used to have this uh, beer hockey um, tournament every year. Mm-hmm. And I used to work it, and I fell in love with ice hockey. Not that I could do it, not that I, you know. Sure, um, <laughs> I'm with you. No much but I, I loved watching it. Mm-hmm, and in merchandise, they had these, uh, you know, those college jackets where it's um, all one color color over the chest and the back and the, and the sleeves are different. Yes. Yeah. yeah they yeah. had, they had gray ones with black leather sleeves. What? And it was what? 75 pounds at the time, which was <laughs> a lot, it was a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but, I dug deep and I got, I got myself one of those jackets and I go. wore that at position. And so I'm busting these moves and stuff like that. And I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if the guy was paying attention, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, cause you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a girl dressed there in, in cycling shorts or anything like that. Oh yeah. But um, I, I was told afterwards that, um, uh, you never know. Stay, um, be on standby. Um, the next tour is, is too legit to quit, and we might what? pass through Europe. So, I, so I'm on like a I'm on like a maybe, and so I'm I come back and um, I'm just like whoa, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah, well, <laughs> just uh, that, take, take a quick little weekend to go audition for MC Hammer. You know, as you do. <laughs> you know, go have one across it's... the world. <laughs> You know, but, but but it's one of those things where it's like the opportunity says, um, do you want to do this right now? Absolutely. And and you can't afford it. And so you're like, mom, I need some help. Uh-huh. Mom. <laughs> of course. And and, and your mom knows your, your hopes and your dreams. And it's like, well, I'm there for you. I'll give it a shot. Incredible. You know, it's, Incredible. You know, it's Hammer. It's not like it's come through a third party or, or anything like that. It's a member of the team. It's it's right. It's... it's you know, and I worshipped Hammer. You know, it was like full expression. It was the videos. It was of the um, um, just the showmanship. You know, and you know, you could see it was hard work. Oh yeah, <laughs> you oh, <know>? yeah. <laughs> of course. You don't float you know? across that stage with no effort. <laughs> <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll bring it back the glitz and the glamour and mix it with the funk, and it's and it's right on. Yeah. So um, and. No one was doing that in the UK, and I was just like, "Well, I've got to go to that's where that's family calling." So, yeah, <laughs> so of got... course. So I went on a wing and a prayer and came back on a maybe, and then um, I think it was that year or the year after um, Prince had come back and was performing at Earl's Court, mm-hmm. um, and uh, some friends of mine had told me to come along with them. Um, uh, while the show was on, because we didn't have tickets, but um, if we came to this this certain section, um, some of the MPG kind of hang out and chat. So I'm just like, I'm there. Yeah, of course, <laughs> you know? of course. You know, I, I blink and we're outside, and um, we're chatting to um, who is it? Uh, Kirk and Damon and Tony, the Game Boys, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, yeah, it just, just flows off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah, and course. so I'm ch- just chatting to them, and um, they were asking me if I rap and stuff like that. And uh, I'm really young at this time, you know, and rap. I can write rap, but I can't freestyle and stuff like sure, that. So I'm, sure. just, I'm, so I'm just like, look, man, I can I can string some hooks together. I can string hooks together and, and, all, and dance and all that kind of stuff. And... Um, they said, well, okay, you know, we're, we're back here next year, you know, um, yeah, come, yeah, come see us next year. And, and that's, and that's, and that's with no guarantee. That's just like, yeah, just come and have a chat yeah, and course. stuff like that and hang out. Um, 
and um and that's the way and that's the way that i took it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know? that's how you it know, goes it's like, oh, you know it's like cool company because there were a few a few of the guys there that would hang out occasionally and that they knew and they would chat to and stuff like that and if they could see that you were cool then it's just like yeah yeah cool we'll chat um and so i was just like holy sh- yeah. sugar because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? it was the 90s and so, that was the slang at the time <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> and and look look this is how does this happen uh, the only thing that i can put this down to is that on my bedroom wall and I'll put this I'll put this out as a whisper. Like even on my Instagram, the picture is still there. But yeah. there's a picture of um an original Star Wars poster. And um beneath it it basically describes the fact that on my poster wall as a child I had um pictures of um uh Boy Brown and Janet Jackson. And it just so happened that as M- M- when I was in M and eight, um Janet Jackson actually chose us to support her for our whole European tour yes. over choosing two or three acts. And she said, no, emanate, that's all I want. And so um, so that happened. Um, posters of MC Hammer and Marble, um, we just heard. Um, posters of um, Spider-Man. And the strange thing is, is that um, Stan Lee was, was over here promoting um, the amazing Spider-Man um, cartoon at the time mm-hmm. um, on DVD, and I had called in the BBC, the, the broom cupboard, <clears throat> and I, I was like, "Look, my name's Details. I'm in M and A. Look, I'm a big, I'm a big Spider Man <laughs> fan. You know, you've got to get me Stanley's autograph. You please, please, please." And um, the lady said, um, "He's just left, but um, he's just left for Scotland, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see what he can do." And then a week later, um, a signed uh, a, a piece of paper came through attached to um, the uh, DVD inlay of, of, Spy- of Spider-Man, two details from Stan Lee. <laughs> so, right? Oh, my and so, God. Um, uh, and what else? And then I had pictures of, I, I, posters of prints on the wall, and we just heard that's as close as, as I got to um, the MPG um, and, and showing my love that way. Um and then um, had posters of uh, Tim Burton's Batman on my wall. Oh, and then yes. Ten, and then ten, 10 years, and I really wanted to be an extra or something on that, and it just didn't happen. And um, <laughs> 10 years later or so, um, I end up uh, being, doing some character support as a Gotham City police officer on Batman Begins. Yes, you did. Um, well, I am uh, quite familiar with your filmography. <laughs> <laughs> That is incredible. I didn't know about the posters. See, I love stories like that where it's like almost fate. You know what I mean? It's like I always believed that like if you're a kid, right, and you have these dreams and I feel like the average kid goes through like, you know, I want to be a cowboy. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be this. I want to be that. And it changes so much. But I feel like if as a kid you have a dream and it sticks, like for some reason you're like, this is just what I need to do. I believe it's meant to come true. And if you put in the yeah. work, it like there's no other option. It's just going to happen. When you've heard of it happening to random people before, you know it sure. means it's possible. Abs- it absolutely. Means it's possible. It absolutely. means that means that it's 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 possible. There's no such thing as impossible. That's why it's possible. I totally. And agree. that's why you. Have, and that's why you have the dream and the ambition because it's been done before. But you want to do it a different way. You want to do it your way. Exactly. So it means it's possible. Exactly. So I, I do have to ask, where did you learn to dance? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You can't just be showing up winning battles and then going for MC Hammer. Like, talk, talk to me, D. Oh, wow. It's a very wow, sp- wow. it's a very specific skill. Was it something you just picked up or took classes or – I should What's be laying this? down on, on. I should be laying down on my sofa. This is like therapy. Um, <laughs> That's you know what? Uh, if you're having a good time, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, something happened um, just last month, and uh, this amazing individual just reached out to me just to show some love and um, an appreciation for what I was doing in Star Wars, and um, and to say that. Um, it's the kind of direction they, they're aiming to move in and um, what advice would I have for them? Sure. And, um, 
and um, it's the same individual that inspired a lot of um, kids at a certain time, um, somewhere in the 80s, maybe 82, 84, um, when um, breakdance hit the cinemas. Oh, you know? right. yeah. Yeah, Air Turbo and Ozone, you know. Um, sure. And then shortly after that, you know, Breakdance 2, Electric Boogaloo, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, of course. So that came out. We're talking about a time when um, a music wasn't black or white. We were talking about a time when um, style and fashion and dance wasn't um, segregated to one uh, sound or 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 one kind of form it was where everyone got on the dance floor it's like when we talk about prince we're talking about everybody being there you know yeah. it ain't just ain't just one nation under that you know um it's a universe under that That's so right. it's kind of it's kind of like um when breakdance came out you know in America, I think it had been going for maybe five or maybe even ten years prior to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we weren't getting it um, in floods like that. We were getting dribs and drabs because in the charts, our charts were eclectic, man. We would have, you know, I don't even want to start this list. But we would have, <laughs> we would have you know, anywhere, anywhere between Duran Duran in the chart, you know, yeah. and um, Chris Costello and then Madonna. You know, and then, you know, Michael Jackson has just dropped a tune, you know, um, and then UB40 have just dropped another tune. We're, we're talking about the charts being that free and that good. Sure, <laughs> you know? sure. You know, so so breakdance came out, you know, everybody was dancing, everybody was popping, locking, and, and if you could do it, you know, throw yourself on the floor and do some crazy legs and windmill. We were just mirroring what we saw on the screen. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's such a, um, a heartwarming, um, simple film to get, you know, in terms of what we're talking about, how you aspire to your dreams, Yeah. you know, and, and how it doesn't matter where you come from. Ooh! That's right. <laughs> you know, this, That's right. This is getting this is getting profound that's right you know um and um and you could take the audience there with you on that ride you know we you'd be in the cinema you know and in the next screening you may be having um electric dreams showing you know sure. um and then um you know howard the duck first one down down yeah. in the other book you know? <laughs> you know it was you know it was surreal you know um and then you know what was the other one um the breakfast club we're talking everything kind of mirrored yeah mirrored music and it was visual Mm -hmm. um and everyone that i hung out with as far as body poppers were concerned gravitated to turbo boogaloo shrimp you know michael chambers this is the dude that to me and and i i was just like oh my goodness how 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 do i sure tell this tell this guy how much of an influence he was because it was at that moment it kind of all kind of clicked where I realized that when you when I found that I could dance and I was good enough to dance with my friends and my friends were good enough to dance with me and we could go out and and go to a club no well, go to the school disc go to the school disco and bust a move and and have everybody stand in a circle you know yeah. and and love just and, join just, in. and just kind of emanate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I had to. <laughs> you know, it, it was it, maybe it was emanating from then. You know, that's right. That's right. The true birth. <laughs> you know, um, so um, having that confidence just to know you could do something. Of course. Yeah. Um. Uh. And in front of people, and it was freestyle, so. We we hadn't even gravitated to doing routines like the Rocksteady Crew or something. We hadn't gravitated to that yet. Right. You know, um, we were just like, yeah, look at us. We can do what they do in the movies. That's right. <laughs> you know? Spin, 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 spin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, wow. What was your and... What was your go to move? Like, what was your trump card? We're like, all right, it's time to it's time to end this. 
What'd you pull out? Oh, oh, oh! It was some. It was some locking and and an odd weave. Yeah. Hang on, wait. No, there'll be. Yeah, there'll be some locking into into a couple of steps of up rocking, and then it will go into one dive to the ground where I do this do the windmill once and back up to my feet, and then stand it with my hands folded. What? <laughs> what? Well, you have to end with the hands folded, man. That's that's the mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're flying through the air, and you're like, "Yep." <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm making it sound a lot cooler than it actually was at the time, you know. De- Delphal, I've seen um, the, I've seen Emanate's music videos. It was definitely as cool <laughs> as you're making it sound. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. I Thank could, you. I couldn't do any of that. I had a buddy who could do like the marionette, you know, where you would like pretend to punch him out and he would go down and then you'd put your hand above his head as you're oh, treating him like a marionette. Oh, yes. I couldn't do yes, anything, yes. so I was the hand <laughs> that was above him. <laughs> I knew my I knew my capabilities right out the gate. <laughs> you know, but it's kind of, and and it's kind of like just how these things just happened began to happen yeah. because I didn't believe that there was a distance between what someone else had achieved and what they were doing to what it was that I thought that I could do. What I would say though is that part of that drive is thinking that you're ready already. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know? of course. <laughs> Fake it till you, you make know, it if you and, have to. <laughs> yeah, and and you're absolutely not ready. You know, um, the the journey, you know, the in in the desire, um, when you're thinking it and then you're saying it and then you're doing it, um, and um, you're looking at every tiny little aspect. Like if you're watching a movie, you're like saying, well, I'm not. I wasn't in that, but you know, was there? Is there a part in there I could have done really well? Yeah, I could have done that. Yeah, and and treating it as homework. Of course. Or trying just get getting your mind in the sense of like this is what we're working toward, you know. And in the meantime, you know, you're struggling. So it's like it's for me. It's like well, until things until things hit with emanate, um, I was going to try and dance these contracts into existence. You sure. know. Um, and um uh so so where are we where do we go from here um <laughs> where we go from where here? Am I? <laughs> luck is preparation oh, yes, right. meets opportunity <laughs> right. right at the posters we okay so so one or two of those things could, i could say yes a coincidence but all of those things every single one of those things you know and the one poster that never came down from my wall was the star wars poster oh yes oh yes so so actually you did you did emanate right and then you get into acting from there. I love that your passions like became my favorite Star Wars quote of all time is from Qui Gon, and he says, "Uh, your focus determines your reality." Absolutely. And, like you're living <laughs> proof. Like, dude, you toured with Janet Jackson. What? Yeah. Do you like that is crazy. That's the highest, <laughs> and especially to be in like an R and B band touring with Janet Jackson. What? Yeah, and. and- and can I say at this moment, I've got to give a big shout out to KG, Cool T, and G Man. Absolutely, my fellow emanators, my fellow emanators, much love. Much love indeed. I, you guys are awesome. And you, Janet Jackson, that blows my yeah. mind. How? I, yeah. One thing I've always wondered. So when you're on a big show like that, what are the rehearsals like? Because I don't know if you've noticed, I'm really into the process of everything. <laughs> okay. So um, the rehearsals for who? For Janet Jackson for, for that European tour. Um, um hours hours days like yeah 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 yours uh, emanates no, i mean i mean emanates yes or, or hers we don't really know too much about hers other than when they were doing a sound check yeah of course yep. you know or emanate um, opening for janet um, jackson um right so we had to um create a 20 minute set and um like i said i just uh i'd come from a background of watching people like prince perform and Mm-hmm. and um, and things like that so I then when we worked out what, what tracks we were going to perform and what order we were going to be in um, I'm struggling to I'm not even going to try and remember what tracks we did <laughs> uh, it's, you it's know, asking too much I can't remember yesterday I know, <laughs> you know um, I know Lonely was on there I've got lots of four years on there if you're going to be in um, uh, maybe Happy was on there oh, yeah see now I'm, now I'm wondering so yeah, um was- Oh, to the moon, yeah, speak tune. So, so, yeah, so, um, so 
you know, once we worked that out and what order they were going to be in, I was like, well, we're, we're not just going to appear, walk onto the stage and, um, and then the lights go up and then we're there and we sing and all that kind of stuff. I said, no, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to line up and, um, and I need the guys in the studio to create a mechanical sound of something breaking or something opening. Ooh. And, uh, and um, at each one of those things, um, I want to hear, uh, I want to see a spotlight appear over each one of us. Um, and each time that does, we were going to lock um, oh. in one of those shuddering moves, like we've just landed or just appeared or just whatever. Yeah. You know. Um, Genius. <laughs> you know, and then and then there was and then there was going to be um, uh, another sound. uh one after the other where we each then turn around in that one locking move mm-hmm. and then there were going to be these steps when we clump 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 yeah clump, clump clump and then it was going to be an explosion into um everybody get up and get down emanates yes. in the hat yeah. <laughs> dude so you also like you basically were a director as well you're like i've um, got this vision well, well, for intro, for the intro, I would go as far as that. Yes, yeah, yeah. and That's and big. but close to the producers on that. So before we even got to those uh, mechanical sounds, mm-hmm. we had this atmospheric mm-hmm. sound of all the um, news footage of uh, fans talking about M and A and um, reporters talking about M and A, news people talking about M and A, and all this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. um, all in darkness. Um, before you had that sound and you got those spotlights and then you got that explosion and we went into um, the first first performance. Mm-hmm. Now, that was our set. We maybe rehearsed that for maybe, uh, oh, I'd like to say a month, but it could have been two two weeks. Um, and um, and, we, and uh, I'd worked how, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd worked out with our um, uh, uh, wardrobe coordinator at the time, our stylist, who was mm-hmm. Al Berlin at the time. Um, absolute lovely guy. And uh, what our press performance outfits were going to be. So it were going to be the, uh, the white baggy jeans, and it was either going to be these red jacket tops or these blue um, jacket tops. And then we'd, for the ballads, we'd then switch into the white shirts. Sweet. And... Um, uh, just just for just for the visual um yeah. and the lighting on the stage um because that's all i was concerned with is is how how we looked and how, how we presented ourselves having seen the likes of um hammer like i said and watched new edition perform and people like that sure and so um, and so uh yeah we worked all that out and then um yeah, it was go time, and we had met Janet and and the dancers during a press uh, interview um, she was doing, and then we were just there, I think, um, for the photographs and things like that, um, for either MTV or some magazine or something like that. Okay, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying. I'm, I'm struggling to go yeah. back. <laughs> That's fine. And. Uh, uh, we thanked her for having us on the tour and stuff like that. And and the dancers were really really cool. We, we were hanging out with um, Nikki and Kelly and and um, and the, and and those guys. They were just hilarious. Yeah. And uh, they taught us how to play the card game Uno. Um, oh sweet. Or how basically how to cheat at the card game <laughs> Uno. We never, never, never played that game before. Of course. Um, it's called Dos. <laughs> <laughs> No, is it? No, no, no. no. Don't, do that. Don't do that. I know. I'm sorry, you were drinking. <laughs> I can't help it. The improv brain. <laughs> you know, and so um, there was an advert on where um, oh, what's his name? Um, Enfield was was advertising something and he would shout armadillo at the end and and kg was 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 prone to doing that so the <laughs> girls picked that and um 
Yeah, and then the guys taught the girls some 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 swear words. Of course. And it just so happened that, that me and G Man were just walking backstage um before a show once and just happened to run into to, to Janet Jackson. <laughs> no, I can't say it like that, but we did. And um and and she was laughing and she and she stopped us because we didn't know what to say. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to Janet Jackson? <laughs> just got to smile and keep walking but it was just like oh my god you can't <laughs> and um and she says and she goes hey guys how you doing and we said oh we're good thanks um the show's going amazing and she said thank you whatever and it was like uh she says oh the girls um nikki and kelly they um they 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 told me to to, to say this to you <laughs> um and she said that she said to say that you guys are a bunch of and she said this word, and and, and our mouth, our, our mouths just dropped. Um, oh, no. Our mouth, <laughs> and, and 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 we said, and then we panicked. We said, no, 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 you can't say that word. Yes. No, 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 you can't. Yes. Say that that's, that's, that's that's a bad word. <laughs> right. Janet, Janet, stop! No, no. <laughs> Who taught you this? <laughs> And and I'm sure I'm sure she knew, but she sort of looked at our faces and she's like get laughing and giggling and so did we. And then she and then um and then 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 we parted ways and and that was a moment. And that was you know that was part. part yeah, of the I would I would say so. that's a moment. Uh, another moment <laughs> that not a lot of people have is a, a, a group that meets at a club and then goes on to open for Janet Jackson and then you're performing in front of thousands of people. What was that for somebody who always wanted to be an actor? What was that like being yeah. on stage in front of like very, very small percentage of the human race gets to experience that? Well, it was still it was still part of the stepping stone as far as I was concerned because I was thinking, you know, obviously the root of it all is like, well, if the band's successful, it afford um, us to all do well, the guys to do their solo albums, and I can go and do some acting or whatever and stuff like that. Of course. Um, the dream, the dream that, that that I guess all boy bands have, I guess to some degree. Excuse me. And um, so uh, when it came to that, we had rehearsed what we had, what we did so well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we were in full control of what whatever we chose to do on that stage. Um, we would decide um, before going on how much of the dance routine we we're going to do. And then the rest was going to be running, and then the rest was going to be running about, you know. Um, and then we would whether we and then at one point in the song where we would cross and 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 do my little hammer tribute or whatever, uh-huh. um, we would meet to do that, and then that would be the end of the routine, and then carry on doing what we were doing before, you know. It was it was as free as that, sure. In terms of um, our shows being being different to um, our performances being different mm-hmm. um, because we have set to the same the same same time every single night sure um and so um to open with that kind of stay oh and i need to say to open up with that stage performance with that turning round and in those steps yeah. that was me that was me taking that completely from prince's opening for party man that he did um at those concerts that i worked at what beautiful yeah beautiful <laughs> beautiful you know, no Be- you know, no one would know unless they love Prince away as much as I did. That's the um, best. And um, and no, and um, it it was it was just spot on for for how I want how I wanted Emanate to drop sure. um, on an on an op- on an opening. You know, and the everybody get up and get down. Um, emanates in the house it was me reworking. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it just hit me. Is is me reworking the opening for MC Hammer's tour? Please, Hammer, don't hurt. Yes, that is amazing. Boom. Amazing that the subtle references are always the best. You know, it's like if you know, you know. You that know, is, <laughs> I do. That is incredible. So, so all of this was like, like you said, a stepstone into acting. So, what was the first acting job you ever got? Whoa. Okay. So. um so yeah, so emanate emanate this band, and we're like, well, look, we own the name. We can come back to this whenever we want, right? And so let's go off and and have the career and have the families and whatever and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I was like, well, right, okay, now I 
can get back to acting. I don't need the contracts. I just need an agent. Sure. And so, um, so I went off to um, agents and stuff like that. And at the time, there was a lot of um, a lot of the rejection that you can expect in oh, regards yes. to saying um, that we ha- we have our quota for um, for black guys on our books. So, ah, so, I, was, so I was like, I was like, I was like, ah, oh, so I missed that ethnic quota just by ah. one month. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay it so, works out <laughs> so so you know it was you know i i kept so i was just kept looking around and then um i was picked up by um one agency and uh didn't get me any any work but sent me out to do a lot of meet and greets so i would be sent along to castings that i wasn't um being seen for per se oh. but i was just gonna <laughs> pop in and say hello um, uh, because this casting, because this agent recommended I just come and introduce myself. Sure, you know that she, so she that she knew so well because she was connected. Right, and so I did, so I did that, and I met the Hubbards and um, and uh, Marilyn Johnson and, and people like that, and they're probably like, who? <laughs> they're like, do you? <laughs> and, you know, I'm a bit like a ghost, you know, in, in terms of where you know how I've through and who I've seen before and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so um. And so, yeah, so I did that for a while and then um, nothing was coming through. So I was like, okay, I'm going to Philadelphia for a holiday. Um, I've got to see a friend over there. And just as I'm about to get on the plane, um, I get a phone call saying, oh, they'd like to see you for EastEnders. And I'm like, and I'm like, do they want to see me particularly or is this just a casting? (laughs) To say hi? Sure. Well, 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 I wanted to know what degree this was, whether whether they wanted to um, see me just as, as everybody else in a casting or if they wanted or if they seen my face and said, oh, we want to see D for something. Right. You know, because um, also part of wanting to be an actor is I grew up watching um, uh, yeah, 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 um, Logan's Run, um, oh, Buck, Buck, Buck Rogers. Um, Knight Rider, the A Team, uh, Outstar Galactica, you know, uh, all these, all these TV shows that seem like movies, sure, right? And then, you know, on various weekends on on UK TV, there would be movies like um, Close Encounters, which was a bit grown up, but oh, yeah. it did suck the kid, you know, um, Close Encounters. You know, I remember the, <laughs> my mouth's moving too fast. I, I, I remember. <laughs> You know, it's it's taken me places that I'm like, hang on, wait a minute, don't tell I know them that. exactly what you mean. <laughs> That's why I started a podcast. <laughs> but I recently went to um, see an orchestral um, performance at a screening of um, E.T. at the Festival um, Arena, I think it is, at the South Bank, uh-huh. um, with some friends of mine, um, Julie, Jason, and Harry. And, um, and... It reminded me that when the first when I went to see E.T. at the cinema, and that was the first movie I sat I sat in where I actually cried. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? there you go. I you know That's and fair. you know and I you know tr- look I understand I understood puppetry I knew at times there was someone in there I knew because I grew up watching Sesame Street I love Sesame Street I will always love Sesame Street. Same. You know. And the Muppets. So I know that, you know, I love, um, I, I grew to love Jim Henson's movies as well because oh, they, yeah. they weren't around at that point that I didn't know about. So mm-hmm. until um, Labyrinth and Dark Crystal came along, I wasn't, I wasn't too aware, possibly seen Legend. Um, but he, that there are some moments in E.T. and I won't give away any spoilers, right? But there's some moments. <laughs> it's been 40 years. <laughs> 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 but you, yeah, trust me, right? Yeah, yeah, tr- yeah there'll be someone. You ruined ET for me. <laughs> <laughs> so the interesting Absolutely. podcast is a spoiler cast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone should do a scene though. I know they should. Just, the, <laughs> it opens with, Welcome to the spoiler cast. He was a ghost all <laughs> along. <laughs> <laughs> If you take that idea, you know? just credit Brian in details. <laughs> Please. <Yeah. laughs> and so, and so, it, you know, um, movies like that. I wanted to be a part of movies like that, and 
Ooh, yeah, I was gonna, yeah. So um, <laughs> I was talking, to, I was talking to someone about this this moment where um, I was watching Superman with Christopher Reeves. Oh yeah. Um, for the first time, uh, where they made you believe a man could fly, you know, and because um, it hadn't been done for before, okay, it just hadn't been done before, like Star Wars, it just hadn't been done before. Yeah, of course. Right. So, um, and so, um, you know, there was this one moment where he he I think he come he comes out of the of the Daily Planet, and Lois is hanging from the helicopter above. Yeah. You know, it's attached to the skyscraper, and that um. He steps back into the the, the um, revolving doors and comes out as Superman. And this this pimp with this ride and these chicks, he just says, "Ooh, we that's a bad outfit." Yeah. And then, <laughs> excuse me, and just goes up. That was just unbelievable. It was just so real. And then I was like, I want to be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, there weren't, there weren't many black guys in that movie, so so I was limited. But yeah, I knew exactly. that guy was. Cool. <laughs> I'll he take got, it. Got <laughs> you know? you know? right. Representation you know? matters, D. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But 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 it's it's the little things you kind of cling to. You're clawing the pigeon steps along the way, and yeah. and you're just finding find these things. And so uh, having that phone call, do you want to be in this in this soap? that uh, you know, um, I I can't watch those. I can't watch soaps like that. Yeah. Um, that you know, um, oh, uh, very, very, oh, no, taxing, no. This is like, I don't want the real world, thank you very much. That's right. And so, um, and so, uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't enticed, so I got on the plane anyway. And then, um, uh, the next thing that came up, there was another casting for, for some movie that, um, I can't even remember the name of the movie. Yeah, I was casting for it, and then I went snowboarding, and they were waiting for me. Then I came back, and then I did it, um, and then I uh, did the casting gig, and and then um, that movie just went away. Mm-hmm. And then I turned down another casting for EastEnders, and then that was it. That broke her back, and it was like, oh, I'm not can't represent you no more. I can't do that. Can't do that. Right. You know, and I turned that down because I was getting on a plane. Where was I getting? I was getting on a plane. Where was I going? <laughs> um, Away, uh, very far away. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what I was going. I was going to get on a plane, and um, and then I found uh, this agent called Pauline Oni at Ethnic Artist Agency, mm-hmm. and um, she was like, "Oh, I know about M and A, and I know you, and um, okay, let's give this a tr- let's give this a shot." And so, you know, uh. One of the best things that we tried was she said, well, how do you feel about Shakespeare? And I was like, well, I don't really know much about Shakespeare, right. <laughs> you know. But I remember it was a struggle as a class read. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Tell me about it. <laughs> you know, reading the Scottish play and the witches and whatnot. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just like, okay, yeah, let, let's do some. I'll, I'll, I'll get involved in some workshops. So I got involved in some workshops and I watched um, Romeo and Juliet. Which, which I absolutely loved, um, especially oh, yeah. for the way that they, the way that they did it, and um, yeah, and then um, the workshops turned into um, uh, two two shows, you know, of of two different stories, you know, um, that ran for um, I guess uh, two months each or something like that in the West End, mm-hmm. and uh, the first one was was Romeo and Juliet and I got to play Paris um what? and yeah you know I, I had a sword fight and, yeah. and got yeah and got and got killed and I didn't even know why and stuff and, <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> but you're on the west end like, so well done <laughs> you know it's one of those deaths where you're just like oh come on yeah right <laughs> I saw that coming <laughs> <laughs> just yelling cheap shot as you die <laughs> you know um oh actually no that was the second one the first one was a scottish one and um that was my introduction um i got to watch oh one of my my really good friends teo gill performing as um yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah as 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 the king in that and um he he was mesmerizing and the stage was 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 really sparse in terms of it being black and covered in cobwebs and and things like that and the costumes were exquisite and mm-hmm. and 
um, I got to play, um, they merged the three murderers into one. And so I got most, I got all of that in terms of, oh, in terms sweet. of dialogue um, and talking to Banquo and, and things like that. And then um, I got to play, I think it was, I think it was just um, for special effects, did um, the second apparition. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that was, it was just an amazing thing. And I, I fell in love with, with Shakespeare and, and the the text and how he romanticized even the, the most traumatic things and yeah what w- watching it being performed and what inspired me was teo had pages <laughs> teo had pages to learn bless him you know <laughs> and and i'm looking at my paragraph thinking oh wow that's a lot <laughs> you know? you're like breaking it down okay five sentences five sentences oh god all right all right oh let's do this i guess <laughs> You know, and then so when I realized I've got no excuses, like, no, you've got no excuse. Boom. So I, c- I was able to learn my stuff um, really easily and really quickly. Um, mm-hmm. And um, because of the workshop environment that we worked in, it was it was incredible. And, sure. um, you know, and so and so that was my 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 stepping stone. And then um, because of m and I was able to. Um, get involved in um, various uh, productions, people like having ideas. Oh, let's, let's try shooting this or let's try, a, let's try shooting this sci-fi or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm in for that. If it works, then got show reel. If not, then, you know, um, I've wasted nothing, yeah, you know, right. um, you know, so don't just keep in, just keeping involved in, in the right types of things. So gradually, you know, um, it's like, you know, I find it very, very, difficult to want to do anything that's like a, a soap um, or, or a drama in that respect sure. when um, my dreams have been just dressed and draped in in Spielberg and, and Lucas you know as a child you know um, and I love the entertainment I love the spectacle you know um, like even things like um, Transformers it's not everybody's cup of tea and things like that but you know um I love just the, the 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 big box office of it. It's the summer box office, you know. Um, you know, I'm 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 clinging to the summer box office because that's what I grew up on. You know, give me give me that give me that madness, craziness. It doesn't have to make that much sense. I just want entertainment. Just give it to right. me. <laughs> Show me an explosion and I'm there. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then and then I'm taken back because I used to love watching um, the Three Musketeers with Oliver Reed. Oh, yeah. You know, and then when Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm just I'm just in love with this whole um, fantasy thing, you know, um, of, of putting it on the sea and the writing being so much like um, of the original Musketeers. Well, that's how it is for me. Right. Um, and I, I I can't stop giggling when I watch those movies. Um, not that I can much anyway. Yeah. But, <laughs> but but it's you know all of those things is you just you just gravitate to those things and and. Um, then uh you know i went away i was in 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 malta i was celebrating with my my um my one of my second families um the caravan is over there and um came back to the uk and my agent said oh you've just missed this casting and i was like oh what'd you tell me that for yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> i'm with you don't tell me what's when i it's like okay here we are it's like what did you accomplish besides making me sad now <laughs> yeah but i'm thinking but I'm thinking, it, it, I'm thinking, um, maybe she's still trying to sell me on, on, on doing some corporate gig or doing this or doing oh, that. Right. And I'm just like, you missed this, but I, I have this for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And think about the money, you know. Right. So, <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, and and things like that. I'm thinking, no, it won't take me to the roof doing big movies. I, I have to keep on track with that. Sure. You know, if I get if I get trapped into doing doing a circuit because it's just for for the money in in a, a realm of acting and performance that I'm doing, right? It's, it's soul destroying because I'm trying to reserve every every ounce that I've got for these big moments that I have no idea whether they're coming or not. Sure, that's my that's my gamble so t- i turned down so many jobs so uh, turned out, and and some of the jobs are paying so much money and it's just like 
but that's not going to get me there. No, 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 no. I can't do that. I can't do that. Sure. You know, um, and, and so, um, uh, uh, what was the job? Is it that one? What did she have? For yeah. The okay. So the so the job was she says um it was they're filming some they're filming some Batman movie <laughs> <laughs> just some Batman <laughs> thing. <laughs> goes, 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 You'll know about these comic book things more than I do, you know. But it's some Batman thing, and it was you know um they just they wanted to just see perceive people to be either um an escaped um Arkham Asylum convict or um, a Gotham City police officer, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, uh, but that was yesterday, and I'm just, and I'm just trying desperately to get hold of you, but I couldn't get hold of you, and blah, 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 and I said to her, I said, well, look, um, give, them a, give them a call, let them know that I am here, and I'm available, and if there's any chance that I could be seen today, sure. she said, okay, she said, okay, but no promises, and so um, I'm still traveling um, home from the airport, I get a phone call and she says, um, uh, good news. They're seeing a few people today um, and, and they wanted to know if they could fit you in for, um, let me get this right, uh, you know, um, uh, midday or two o'clock. And I said, um, make it two. Sure. And she said, oh, she said, okay, great. And she said, um, and, and the brief is, is that, no, no, she didn't even give me a brief. Okay. So she said, okay. That's all she said is for Batman. That's all she said. Everything like Arkham and all that kind of stuff is like is what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and so uh, yeah. So so then so then I get I get in and then um, yeah, I'm getting ready and I'm just thinking, okay. So if I'm if I'm crossing, I've got him see police officer. You know what am I gonna do? I was like, yeah, yeah. Box. I saw Batman. I was like, oh my goodness. It'll be like it'll be like <laughs> you just practice. It'll be like, it'll be like, it'll be like holy what the yeah and and and, 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 and just and just yeah and just those kind of looks yeah, you yeah. know rather than try and give it give loads of dialogue mm -hmm. um because i know they don't swear in these movies right which is what we're coming to right yeah. so yeah. um <laughs> and so um i went through um what i would say as a police officer and um and then what i would do if i um uh encountered batman you know no, if i was an escaped convict and then if i encountered batman and and then if i was a police officer and all that kind of stuff so i did all these kind of variations in my head yeah, yeah. and and then um, i got there and um i sat outside and she gave me the piece of paper and it was saying that you're a police officer and you just encountered batman uh -huh. and then the second one and the second one was um uh your um an escape convict and you're just and you're yeah you're an escape convict and you're approaching um a lady um protecting a little boy and i think in the movie that was katie holmes yes yeah? and and so um both of those things were the first things that i rehearsed in when i was getting ready yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> <of course. laughs> right. you're like, I, I can prepare oh. now right so i'm like hey i've got this <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? of course yeah cake <laughs> So I'm sat there, and someone's in in the other room, and I can hear them doing their piece, and he's effing, and he's blinding, and he's swearing, and this curse word, like, and I'm thinking, they don't swear in movies. So I was just like, okay, if this is what I'm up against, right, <laughs> okay, right. I got this in the so, bag. <laughs> Take that sweary McGee. <laughs> you know. So, so, so I stand a chance, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got in there, um, and she even gave me um, five minutes to prepare, and I'm just like, Man, I'm ready go. to go. I was like, okay. And so, um, and then I did it, and then I thanked, I thanked them for the uh, for seeing me, and then I left, and then I called my agent, and I just said, thank you for arranging it. Um, thank you so much. It was awesome. And um, no, yeah, I left it on her answering awesome machine. Uh -huh. um, because and, and I do that because um, it's about me challenging me as to whether I can deliver within a casting. The casting is going to be the most high pressured situation you're ever going to be in um, on a production, Absolutely. unless it's something unless it's something really really serious or whatever. But for a movie, you know, um, once you once you've been cast, it's all family pulling together and it's all, all a lot of love right there. Yeah, yeah. But when but when you're um, trying to um, 
uh, birth yourself into that family yeah. um, with this with this talent and and um, and and your performance. It's always a shot in the dark. So it's just like, well, I've got to nail it. I've got to know what exactly what I'm going to say, or if I've got if there's dialogue, I've got to know exactly what the dialogue is. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to go in there. I've got to nail it because when I nail that, then I've succeeded and I walk out, and then I don't care if I've got it or not because I'm like, yes, that was the most high pressure. It's like an adrenaline rush. Yeah, of course. That's when you nail you know, it. And, you know, and then then the bonus and the cherry on top is then you get the phone call and they say whether you got it or not. You know. And in this case, my agent called me back up and said, um, ha- said, hang on a second. Did they let you know before they leave? I said, what do you mean? And I said, um, I was just calling you up to say um, uh, thanks for the for the casting. And she says, oh, no, no, no. They they, they pulled up and said, um, said, great, you're on set tomorrow at 6 a.m. Hey, and <laughs> there you go. You know, and it was just like, whoa, I just got off a plane. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, what? 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 <laughs> you know so so um so yeah and and then I, I get there and then um all of the ad's are just yelling left right and center where's details details come over here uh, details you're doing this uh, where's yeah. details De- <laughs> and so I'm, I'm i'm going left right and center and they're saying and everyone's confirming no 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 he's not a conflict he's he's one of the officers yeah and so i go over to and then and they, they fit me up, and, and there isn't much of me, so they're padding me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, those pads. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dream for fabrication, you know. Yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> I, get, I, give, I, give, I give Vanessa lots of work. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, Vanessa Bastion, I love her. So, um, so, but, so, 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 yeah, so they put this bulletproof vest on me, then put this um, bomber jacket on me, then put this police um, belt on me. And um, I made um, some good friends down there. Um, Andrew Price, um, another fellow actor, and um, and uh, yeah, as soon as I stepped on set, it basically um, these airship hangers, you know, and uh, one of them was bought by Warner Brothers and was owned by Warner Brothers since the first Batman with Michael Keaton. Right, and so so we're walking towards there, and we've just signed our non disclosures and all this kind of stuff. And we walk past this police van, and these officers they start yelling at us, like, "Come pose for a picture!" So we run over, pose for a picture, and the AD just runs over and jumps in front and says, "You've just signed your non disclosures. You can't do that." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, and then and I walk on set, and then as I'm walking in, my my police belt falls to my ankles oh, no. because. Oh. I'll, I'll, I've got a tiny waist, so yeah, yeah. so I'm getting I'm getting assisted um, it, with my belt um, while I'm stood there, and then in front of me, you can hear this huge rumbling, and it's um and it's the the Batmobile. It oh, was um my god the, the tumbler tumbler yeah yeah, and it reverberated the entire set. Now then I took in the entire set. It was Gotham City from the ground right to the top. What? They had washing. They had various streets. There were various cars parked in various streets. There was a car with a huge dent in in its um in its hood, and um someone said to me, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's where um the stunt double buster he he he, he gets burnt or something, falls out a window, <laughs> lands on lands on the car, and then roll, rolls off." You know? Yeah, there's <laughs> you know? a spectacle, man. <laughs> you know, and I'm just thinking, whoa. Yeah. You know, and um um and I remember it fondly because it was such a nice um, couple of weeks in, in the sun. And um, in one of those weeks, I gave up going to see Simon and Garfunkel in Hyde Park, Ooh. you know, um, on one of those sunny evenings, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you better make it worth it if you're missing it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so it was kind of like, well, you know, there's that. And then there's Batman. And then there's God. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, so so um so it was it was amazing, and um, it's it's things like that, and getting to watch Gary Oldman walk onto a set, walk on walk on to perform his scene, yeah. and and me and my friend um Andy were stood there watching, and we could see what he was doing because they were doing multiple rehearsal takes and then multiple takes, 
And so we could see what he was doing. And he was changing his stance, and he was changing his breathing. And then he was, and and, and we, me and Andy just looked at each other and said, oh, he's given the, he's given the, um, the director some options, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's that, and you're watching as, as actors. You know, you're not watching going, oh, it's Gary Oldman. You know, you're, th- you're like, oh, you're like, what can I learn? Yeah, you this know? is a master class. Yeah, and um, right there, it kind of really did define to me, if it hadn't already, that, you know what, there is nothing else I can do, nothing else I would rather do. Of course. You know? when, you um, ju- when you just know, it just feels right. Yeah, and, okay. and, and, and I'm in it, the, the, I'm in it the whole nine yards, you know, yeah. um, um, in as much as of, 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 of how I can design it for myself as much as I can. You know, so mm-hmm. that was that was just incredible. You know, um, and I and the thing is, I was being hired as part of maybe fifteen other actors that were brought in as character support. Now I hadn't heard of this before, right? But um, Mr. Nolan had had required had wanted us there in case he wanted to give um, a, a, a line to somebody. He wanted to, it to be to an actor that he gave it to. Sure. You know, and um, in our group, um, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, I'm trying to remember his name, um, Dominic, that's it, mm-hmm. Dominic uh, uh, was given some dialogue, and it's him talking to Katie Holmes at the bottom of the stairwell, you right. know, when he asks him, when he says, ma'am, are you okay, when she's just seen Batman, and you know, and for those couple of lines, we celebrated, man. Yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> you got a line. Yeah, it's you know, huge and, and to it, get a line. And, and 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 it was and it was totally genuine because you know we consider ourselves so lucky to even be on a Batman movie. Yeah, of course. You know, so so you know there is more than enough love to go around. You know, um, in that context, and um, yeah. Then after that, you know, um, yeah, did a little bit again on Captain Phillips, and and that was. Oh, that was that was an interesting one. I think at that point I, I'd reached my limit. I said, you know what, I'm not doing any more of these because I need to be doing a lot more on the screen than than guessing as to whether I'm going to be seen or not. Because, oh, yes. um, you know, because because you know, if you weren't given specific dialogue and things like that, then you're just kind of covering just in case. But of course, I you know, after Batman, it was hard to kind of top that. You, you know, to and I know. <laughs> Yeah, and I know it was it was it was Paul Greengrass, um, Mr. Greengrass, and to be honest, I know it's Mr. I know it's Mr. Hanks. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's Tom Hanks. <laughs> you know, you know, but for the for the journey that that um, I I envisioned myself going in, you know, uh, sure. I could close, I could get close to action. It doesn't have to be sci-fi. So if you're doing another Bourne movie, if if you got room for. <laughs> for, for, for for you know a little frail skinny little black guy somewhere in there you know, um, details I could, I could... <laughs> you know but yeah maybe he's a hacker or something like that you know maybe he's an informer or you know he's something personal, like that i'll tell you that right now <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. He, yeah but he can't fight so don't get involved with anything with jason yeah that's right yeah so um <laughs> you know if it was something like that you know then yeah, I, I could contribute to that. I know what that's about. Sure. But um, but after Captain Phillips, I was I was kind of done. And then the movie came out, and um, I was lucky to even have my elbow in in one of the shots. Sure. So um, you know um, so yeah, I was like, nah, I'm done. Yeah. And so yep. so moved and moved to move str- um straight away from that. So so stopped accepting those when those came in. Sure. You know um, regardless, regardless of what they were and and things like that. So. You know, it's money again. You're turning down, but but yep. you're 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 being really specific about what it is you want. Of so course. if you're being specific with what you want, you're leaving room for it to to, to actually appear. Yeah, so, totally. And agree. so um, and so um, and so uh, what was I doing during that time as well? You know, um, I had uh, been doing um, working at the Royal Opera House and. In Covent Garden, in one of their actors who would mingle in between the, the singers and, and things like that with um, some beautiful people, mm-hmm. um, and 
uh, ended up doing Wagner's Ring Cycle, which, if you don't know, is a marathon, you know, um, of an opera where I think one of them lasts seven hours or and things like that. And um, they would space them out within maybe one or two months. And one of those, uh, one of those was Das Rheingold. And they were doing this sequence of transforming one of the si- singer scientists into this monster and this giant. Right. And um, the, first, the first wave was was like this 15 foot suit where you're having all of his um, muscle tissue um, revealed because um, it's ripped away from the skin. Um, the jacket is still somehow on. Um, he's got a big square mirrored head um, and um, he stumbles forward and then drifts off stage. Um, and that would be performed by me, oh, followed wow. by followed by these two massive mechanical hands that would, would come on from each side of the stage, grab the singers as the head would then appear over the back of the stage and then disappear. And then the singer would come stumbling out, <laughs> you know, and, and, so and cool. it, you know, it was one of those things where it was like, wow, this is just so cool. But, and, and it always generated the giggle because yeah, it was just like, just like, just like you know, of course, you know, you did that. Right. But right, it's yeah. like, yeah, keep <laughs> You know, but it was brilliant, you know, and, um, you know, so I was doing that. And during that same time, I was doing panto. So um, at Christmas for the Christmas shows and, mm-hmm. and things like that for the families mm-hmm. and children. So they would do Aladdin um, and uh, it's mi- mixed with a uh, story and sketches for the for the, for the adults, you know, sure. um, all clean and things like that. But very family orientated. And I was doing that for um, a company called Hiss and Boo. Oh my goodness! Look what we've just run into. Um, so I was, <laughs> I was doing that for a company called Hiss and Boo, um, which um, belonged to um, Ian Liston, and Ian Liston played Wes Jensen. Yeah, yeah. What? These connections are uh, insane, D. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I need to get on the couch. That, <laughs> welcome to the couch that is the interesting podcast. <laughs> that's amazing. And, that, and, and it's also um, kind of funny that that was like your first kind of creature performance, you know? That's pretty good. Oh my! When you think don't, about don't keep, it, don't drop those. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? You you know what I want to cover? You were in uh, Jekyll and Hyde, <laughs> and you were the Harbinger, which was like this dog yeah. thing with your face on it, <laughs> which uh, was yeah. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. When I yeah. saw when I saw that, I was like, "What is happening here? You were so scary." Maybe it's just the fact that you have like this pit bulls type demon body, and it's just your head. How 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 did that come to be? Like, did you audition for it? Did you have to like Andy Circus it up? Like, was that mocap? How was that shot? I've got a hundred questions. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Well, well, okay, we're gonna we'll we'll speed jump there, right? So uh-huh. so from the from pantos into the creatures and and Ian Liston. Find that I was a Star Wars fan, and he signed a picture for me and all this kind of stuff. And um, I went on to do do seven years for him, and did five as Tommy the Cat. Oh, you wow. know, um, uh, was created by um, myself. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to mess up some names: um, Anthony Osborne, Nick Moat, and um, Ian. Oh, Ian. <laughs> Oh, I must forget his, I must forget his, his name, um, our, our director. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't Ian Liston, um, uh, but it all come to me. And, um, and so it was one of those things where it wasn't kind of like the cat's cats from, right. from the show or anything like that. It was um, Ian Adams. Ian Adams. I do apologize. Uh, I do apologize. I love you loads. <laughs> Ian Adams is a doctor. Um, I'm bowing before you, sir. I yes, do apologize. Indeed. And so, um, um, and for me to 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 cr- be able to be given this this black and white furry suit and and this afro with these little white ears, and I could paint my face um, mm-hmm. to fit like a cartoon kind of face, but very expressive on the lips, so you could see when he was sad and happy. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and um, but then it was one of these things where he 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 was very childlike when he was like a cat and very alert, but very innocent, very similar to Donkey, which was perfect because that's how I had him speak, oh, you sweet. know. And 
and then and then when he got up onto his hind legs and, and was strutting around it was a mixture of of chaplin and um jim carrey's the mask oh, you know um, um and and the ears would flop about and things like that it was just the creation of of that character and I, I, that's probably gonna be one of the most beloved characters i've ever played sure um uh, just because of that 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 inception that that creation of 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 him but um yeah it was doing that and um it was uh one of those shows um Brian Herring was working on uh -huh. and um and and I found out that he was um a big Jim Henson fan and did puppetry and all this kind of stuff and whatever and so we kept in touch and um and i know you've run into derek i know you've run into tom <laughs> I, have, I have indeed they're buddies of mine now <laughs> that's you're actually the latest in my collection of just trying to infest the creature department at pinewood <laughs> it's like, you will all be my friends <laughs> you survived derek and tom so, so you're cool you're cool you're that's just right. plain sailing. <laughs> that's right that's right there's some of my favorite talks I I absolutely adore those two. I Same. absolutely adore them. They're amazing. Bless them. <laughs> yeah, for real. So, and so, and so, yeah. So, um, yeah. Obviously, um, Brian Herring. Neil, Neil, Neil. Yeah, um, Brian Herring um, landed Star Wars, and next thing I know, um, Neil Scanlon wanted to see me for, for for something. Sure. You know, and I go in and and, and do that, and. We can come back at this point. Yeah, yeah right, we can right. come back. To... All right, um, because this kind of it's kind of like a crossover during the whole Force Awakens and and Jacqueline Hyde. Okay. But uh, after after um, my experience with with the Force Awakens, yes, uh -huh. um, just filming it, not seeing it or anything like that. Um, this casting came through um and it was uh they wanted a creature performer specialist um and and i think everyone was busy or they didn't know who to reach out to um <laughs> and um i think my my agent caught it really quickly mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then the, the brief came through that it was jacqueline hyde and it would be for um a prophetic uh, creature um, of sorts yeah. <laughs> that, you know, um, break it down would, would deal with a lot of the exposition um, uh, spiritually and, and godly in the show. And it would just be the, requiring the head because the rest of the body would be um, this kind of, um, this kind of demon, yeah, this kind of demon furless kind of, patchy mangy kind of um dog yeah um yeah like i said like a big really really big pit bull mm -hmm. um um it's one of those german pit bulls i don't yeah, know right. what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. But, but, but yeah but anyway um and uh and i just thought okay cool cool so it's just the head and the dialogue and i was i was like okay I, yeah i can do this i can do this so you know i'm rehearsing this thing and um like you're saying, it's really scary, it's you know, terrifying. and, you know, and so, so me learning the dialogue and having to distance myself from, um, the depth of, uh, negative negativity, um, kind of encasing mm -hmm. what he's trying to say. So obviously, obviously it's important to some degree or whatever, sure. but from the realm, from the realm that he comes from, you know, um, and the type of being that he is, you know, in, uh, you know, giving a lot of, um, uh, warning ahead of time, being very prophetic, sure. having that connect to, to that realm. Almost like you a know, harbinger. So... <laughs> you know what? <laughs> we should call it the harbinger. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 yeah but but it's it's internalizing it yeah, so, of so it's kind of like yeah, it's kind of like you're you're absolutely right and and that's why but it's internalizing that as you're as you're learning the dialogue because it's you saying it it's right. you are the harbinger saying it sure. you know so um that um that was a beautiful exercise in terms of delivery and um uh of course yeah and just getting yeah, into yeah. that kind of headspace is crazy 
Yeah, delivery and expression, you know, um, making sure making sure that everything that needed to be said was was clean without drifting into the emperor's voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine just putting in, in the middle of your dialogue, Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> like, what what is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like, you know, and, you know, how much is too much and whatever, so... Like I said before, it's just like I was going in there to nail it. If it was going to be too much, they would say, bring it down a little bit. Of if they were going to say, going too far, slow it down or whatever and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I, I um, wasn't allowed to tell anybody that I was in Star Wars um, of course. at the time. Um, but I was allowed to wear my um, CFX Star Wars jacket. <laughs> ah, there you go. Like, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you know, I, I walked in, walked into the casting, and um, and uh, there was an interest. But obviously, it's great to be able to say no. I can't say anything about it, but mm-hmm. just to say, look, look, I'm about to deliver something because I get it. You know, I've just been hired to do a job because I get it. Right. So give me my shot. Of course. You know, that's what I'm there, that's what I'm there to do. You know. Um, and um, I, when I got there, I said, look, this is how we're going to do the casting. Um, I, wore, I deliberately wore a black shirt, and I said, look, I'm going to turn these collars up, turn the collars up. Um, I said, can you close those drapes over there? And he says, yeah, yeah sure, sure, I can close the drapes. And we turned off the lights, but the spotlights above were, were still on, which was perfect. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, I lean in towards the table with my hands behind my back. I'm going to lean in this much, and this is what I'm going to do it. And he said, okay, great. He said, all right, Kate. I'm go. already in. You know, and I just, and I, and I, I did what, what you see on the screen is what I did in the casting. Wow. That's incredible. And I love the theatrics. You're like, all right, here's the deal. We're going to audition, but we're also going to show them what's what. That's amazing. Yeah, setting up the setting. Yeah. It's, but it, but it's, it's kind of showing that you understand the process and Absolutely. what they want to see. They don't want to see me sat them in a white shirt. They don't want to see me sat them in a white shirt or 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 or, or, or something with different colors and things like that. Yeah, you, know, right. you. They want to see the character. You, yeah, yeah. As as much of the character as possible, and mm-hmm. the, the most professional mm-hmm. color to use is black. That's why they use it on stage. Right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, what what was the shooting like? If we're just using your face, the shooting was amazing. You know. Um, I got to meet the director Colin and and um, Hayden from Dneg. Uh, just like you know, just like you know, when you click with people and and he's into um, Sid Mead and I love Sid Mead. Yeah. And uh, 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 he knew about Star Wars, so he knew I I, I got it. And and um, we were just we, we were talking about everything, and he was talking about how we were going to do the do the book the body and things like that, mm-hmm. and that was giving me an idea of, of of how I was going to perform it while um, while Emma bless her um, was was doing my makeup, um, uh, hopefully to to match the lighting that would work with the rest of the body and things like that. Sure. And so we had some, had some tests and things like that done, and then I was put in a green a green shirt polo neck and i had my jeans on had my trainers on <laughs> and then uh, and then i would um i would kind of kind of get into a lower position mm-hmm. and um hands were on my knees but i was still leaning forward Makes excuse sense. me and um, and um and uh that way when i decided to move about Mm-hmm. I knew I was, I was, he knew that I was swinging the body and the hind legs of the, of the, of the creature about, Sure, you know, and if I would stutter or whatever and stuff like that, it's, it's, you know, when you, when, a, when, a, when a dog is kind of getting really edgy and, and, and doesn't know whether it's going to pounce or whether it's going to, um, flight or something like that. Oh yeah. It's, it, it, it's putting all of those things in, um, it absolutely added to the character, and that's what made it kind of scary. Was it saying these horrifying things, and you're like, "Is it going to attack them?" Because it's 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 walking around well, a little bit. Well, the writing, the writing, you know, the writing was just um, some was just something else. Yeah, you know, uh, I haven't got the computer up. I need to um, remind myself of, of the writer who was involved, uh, Charlie Higson. You know, um, but uh, it was just. 
it just told you that it was incredibly gothic. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, um, you know and um, then I knew kind of what tone to put on that voice, right. you know, in, in what era they were looking at and um, how, um, uh, how most exposition when it's being when it's being told um in a prophetic manner like that sure. um uh resonates you know um because because he has to right of course <laughs> you can't just kind of dip your toes into that kind of a character That's... no it it was incredible um it was... and the rest of the cost and the costumes were amazing yeah oh well, yeah but but it was like I did um, I did four episodes on that and we only did one season and um, it may have had something to do with the time that they wanted to show it or stuff like that but uh-huh. at least having one season kind of means that um, there is hope you know somewhere down in the future that um, maybe they might pick it up again yeah you know sure. or if it's you know, it could be picked up by Netflix or Amazon or something like that or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah, it was it was a beautiful piece to be a part of. That you know, nuts. Um, nuts. So you know, and, that's, and that's my first um, t- um, terrestrial gig, TV terrestrial gig. Sure. You know, for a national casting company. That's amazing. And then uh, you know, we can't. I can't talk to details <laughs> and not talk about the big ticket item. Um, are you good on time? I don't. I'm good on. Okay, because I don't want to keep it too long, and we're about to go in, my friend. You, uh, okay. You, you're, uh, you're in a little space movie. Um, people might have heard of it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You were in Star Wars. As somebody who had a poster on their wall as a kid, you, you've, you've materialized that dream. You've made that, uh, you've made that a reality. How did you first get involved with Star Wars? Um, it was the, by recommendation of Brian Herring to, um, Neil Scanlon. That sounds like you a know, popular but, road. You know, but, 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 but I think, I don't think that it, it was to turn out the way that it was because originally I was, I thought I was being brought in and it was going to be maybe, um, a background, um, cast member to a gang of husks, you know, oh, the great yeah, husks. Yeah. Okay. And, um. Uh, played by and lead varmint played by Paul Warren. Yeah. And so um, I thought, well, okay. And then I'll, there may not be much to do. I don't think there's much to do. So you know, it could be one of those things where it's just like, oh yeah, there's me in Star Wars kind of thing. You know, sure. um, being that kind of uh, disconnected to um, a creature long enough to be able to deem what you're doing worthy of a performance it's it's very very difficult when sure. you when you're when you're an actor and you and you want to give more than, than what you're allowed to do absolutely so when even from playing the cat the suit will do most of the work for you right you know so it was kind of getting adjusted to that um and um hang on, let me just turn i've got to turn this thing off um <laughs> right so um it was just kind of getting tapped into that um where i just thought well okay i'll go and i'll see and you know but it's star wars and it's just like you know the only thing that i ever wanted is to be seen sure you know as long as long as i'm seen then the rest is just on me i can't blame anybody else if i don't get it you know um and at least if i go in there and i give it my all i'm happy regardless Mm. you know so um i thought well okay let's see what this is all about so i went in for for casting and the audition and um, uh, swiftly found out there was no casting or audition. Um, I was being taken to uh, <laughs> to look at um, uh, Ralph McQuarrie painting what? along with along with um, Tom Bell and Nathan Plant and Paul Warren. Oh, sweet! You know, and um, it was it was in a book, so it wasn't like a, a the official painter or anything like that. But yeah, um, Neil wanted to show us his painting so we could see what the creature looked like. And um, I noticed immediately that the shape of of um, Varmic in that picture mm-hmm. is um, is directly taken from um, 
uh, Clash of the Titans, and it's Calabos. You know right. the, that 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 stance only me for me reads that that he moves like Calabos because Calabos is shaped exactly the same as that and sure. has a tail, like the same this creature originally did. Mm-hmm. You know, and I said that to Neil, and Neil was like, "Yeah," yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, and. Um, then it was just being brought in for various fittings for it and then getting a phone call uh, saying that the creature had gone. It had been passed along down the chain and it, it was being considered for um, the uh, actor, actor uh, um, stunt guys, um, geniuses from, from the raid. Right. You know, and it was going to be it was going to be them in these suits. And so I thought, OK, cool. And, but then I, I was celebrating at home, thinking, if this is as close as I got to Star Wars, then I'm on the right path. Yes, yes, yes. I thought I was really genuinely celebrating because, you know, I didn't believe that there could ever be a second chance or a second bite at an apple this exclusive. Of course. You know, um, for the prequels, you know, it was impossible to be seen um, because they weren't shooting it here. Right. You know, um, and uh, it's just an impossible feat. Even if they, you know, even if they say that, you know, and I shouldn't say this, but, but even if they say that, you know, it's an open audition, you know, my mind's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, absolutely. But if, when it becomes easier, there's less of an accomplishment feeling for it. Well, well it's, it's more about, well, this is what I do and I do it in the realms of 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 spotlight and IMDb and, and contacts and things like that. Of course. And, you know, um, <laughs> it's kind of like this is my CV, you know, yeah. I've worked so hard. <laughs> Well, hard for this, you know, but then at the same time, I shouldn't be thinking that because I can queue up the same way. And then um, because of that experience, still be able to deliver. Absolutely. But the, but the thought of, 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 of queuing up like that was, was never really appealing. And, and, and um, I just thought, well, you know, it's happened um, for other people in other ways. So it's possible. Right. So, um, so I just, I just rolled with that. You know, um, be my preferred a way of doing it. Um, not to say there's anything wrong because the greatest discoveries you know, have been made from doing these open yeah, books. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, you know, it's just me being. Eh, yeah. you know? I'm with you, man. You know? I feel the same way. I think it's an actor you know, thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't see that. <laughs> we have to be honest here, D. <laughs> You know oh, what, man. mate? mate you know, it is. <laughs> it's like, back to the couch. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that went on, and so I just thought, okay. And then another phone call came through saying, "Well, D, how do you feel about working on your knees?" And I'm thinking, well, this is Star Wars, man. It's like creatures and Sesame Street and Muppets. Yeah. I don't. You call like. I'm like, I'm like, I'm in, right? <laughs> of course, you don't ask no questions. <laughs> no, I have no idea what I've just done. What I've committed myself to. But I said, I'm in. It's Star Wars. You don't need any more information than that. And so um, I get there and um, I see, um, I think it's, uh, oh, I don't want to get it wrong. I, I think, oh, I think I see Jake's image of Prashy. But he wasn't Prashy at that time. So I see this head and I'm thinking, um, oh, this is great, okay, and he's down here, and they gave me these little shoes, and they had these amazing knee pads in them, and it was just like, this is going to be easy, this is awesome, <laughs> you know, only in Pinewood Studios and CFX, yeah. you know, Neil Scalise, really find perfect knee pads, I was just like, of course. I've made it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this you know? is it. <laughs> and- <laughs> yeah and then they then they're draping me in these in these beautiful robes and and things and you know and then the head comes in and it's not painted and but it's just a a, a rubber head mm-hmm. so i'm um, a synthetic head so um put it on i can see out of it yeah it's fine and so it's taken away and this happens over a course of a few weeks as they as the design gets tweaked okay and then um on one of those weeks, I come in and Tom Bell's there. I'm like, oh my goodness, yeah. And he says, yeah, there's going to be two of us. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so gonna, at least I've got some company, yeah. right? So, and so, um, 
we're both getting ready and stuff like that. And um, we were stood in front of the mirror and, you know, and we we're just talking, saying, you know what, these creatures, they're going to need some kind of language or something, aren't they? You know, and we start, we start doing some alien talk and chatting, which is yes. only normal of course. in this context. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You guys Please kept it up after. <laughs> we ain't crazy. Please understand. We ain't crazy. That's right. So, um, <laughs> so, um, and so, so we're doing that. And then they said, okay, the heads are coming in. They've been painted. So here they come. So the first one comes in and obviously I see Prashi's head, but I'm thinking, okay, that's my head. That's the one I tried on. Sure. And they gave it straight to the bomb. And um, I was like, oh, and they were like, hmm. oh yeah. They said, and they said, no, no. And they were smiling. And they said, no, no, your one's coming. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, it's like and Christmas. so, <laughs> you know, and when they brought it in, I think this one was Luke Fisher's design. Then when they brought it in, he had this massive smile on his face, um, equal to mine. And yes. it was just brilliant, yes. you know? And, and then we put it on and then we started performing and the wardrobe department were there watching us perform and it was all silly. And, and I'd, all I had to do was keep laughing. And um, Aiden Cook um, oh, yeah. was coaching in terms of um, our interaction and things like that and um, giving us some notes um, from, from Paul Casey, who's also oh, yes. there to keep, you know, I'll keep the um, creatures, um, you know, stable. And, um, and so uh, we did that and whatever. And I thought, OK, great. And then they said, OK, cool. We'll see you next week for show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, great what's show and tell yeah right and yeah. then they were like <laughs> you know, it's like well you know we've got this section in another studio where um all the we put a group of creatures in there and then jj will come through and decide um which ones he wants to keep which ones he can place immediately or or, or things he, he will want to use later uh-huh. and mm-hmm. it's like oh okay so you know i thought that i thought we'd got it i thought okay we got it so yeah. um <laughs> don't get comfortable yeah, like, <laughs> yeah you know it's, and so um, Tom and I looked at each other and thought, oh, crap. So, <laughs> and so, and so, and so um, uh, the following week came and um, we then I then spotted Nathan and Paul dressed up as the husks. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it came back. And yeah, yeah, um, uh, for the suits that they made, um, we were the only two that could fit in them and blah, blah. And, so, and we were just ha- really happy to see them. Right. So the four of us had gone in had um landed um a creature to play you know which uh-huh. was really which was amazing and um uh they were going to start moving as, as soon as they saw jj come in the room and uh, because my back was to the entrance tom um, was looking at me so he was going to start gesturing and every time he gestured or said something i was going to crack up and um to my right was a long table and some weighing scales and um Oh, well, now I'm going to have to get the book. <laughs> I have oh, to say, I absolutely is... love that you have the visual dictionary for reference. It's amazing. Oh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about you, D. <laughs> like, excuse me one second while I pull out my book. And I'm like, yes, you're one of us. You're one of us, D. <laughs> <laughs> but they were these, they were these adorable puppets. Um, uh, swindlers. Um, I think they were. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. Where then? Oh, are they? They at the back. <laughs> <laughs> As D grabs yes. his visual dictionary for context. Yes, um, Sonsigo and Manduri on yes. page on page seventy six. Page seventy six. And, and they were being puppeteered. And now, 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 I'm in the realm of Sesame Street and the Muppets. You're in the magic. And yeah, and 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 on on a Star Wars set, yeah. Dude. So and it, and it was Damien Damien operating one of them and Colin operating the other, and my mind was 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 blown. But fortunately, I had my um, <laughs> you had the head on. My, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I could hide a lot of that. And then I saw the big guy. Oh no, I'm, I'm referencing the man. I've got to look in the book again. Is it so, Grim, um, Grimgar, like, the giant? Yes, sitting. I got you, man. <laughs> Yeah, you got my back. That's right. So, um, so he was sat there, and then um, there were the mosquitoes, the giant mosquitoes uh-huh. on on the table just behind us. Yeah. And um, and Neil came in, 
and um <laughs> you know i'm surrounded by all these legends and professionals and i even spotted warwick davis what? and I had to run up to him and, say, and and just greet him and to say hi you know um and neil comes in and, and he's just talking to us and he says look um when i say creatures come alive creatures come alive and um uh, you just keep going until I say creatures stop. And everyone just said, yep, okay. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, I'm laughing, right? So I said, Neil. <laughs> I said, Neil. So I've just, I said, Neil, I just got to keep going, yeah? And he says, yeah, just keep going. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my, so, so, so I walk back, I'm like, just keep going. Just keep going. Just, just keep, keep going. going. <laughs> <laughs> and so the heads are on. It's all gone silent. And then movement happens behind me. Um, JJ's walked in and Tom Bell starts nudging me and I start giggling and I start laughing and I start falling about. Um, and um, it's, yeah, it, I, it's all timed with, with whether um, Tom will gesture for me to see something as he says something or if he whispers something to me, right. you know, um, like, no, no one, you know, when you're walking with two people, I'm walking another person. And you see something like you see some other guy um, just trip over in the street, you know, and you look, and you look over at your mate. Right. And your mate looks. And as your mate looks, that person looks up and sees your friend looking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know it, it's, one, it's one of those things. Absolutely. Right? And so, and so um, uh, that relationship just just came alive pretty much instantly. And um, by the time they said um, creatures end, I then took off off the head and I was, obviously I was sweating loads of course. and um, there, was, there was I think there was about two or three cameras in the room and um, everyone was just smiling and laughing yeah, <laughs> you know course. how can you, you know, not and, <laughs> you know and, uh, and I'm trying to imagine Neil, Neil trying to talk to JJ and describing you know um, Singonzo and, and Mundinga see I'm just making names up now yeah, right. but the two puppet guys <laughs> Pablo get on Fonsi. it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I do apologize, Pablo. Don't, right. don't, don't out that man. <laughs> if you use those names, credit details and Brian on the interesting podcast. <laughs> you got to be on it, man. <laughs> you know, so, so, so he, I can imagine him trying to talk to JJ and having, having me and Tom laughing, mm -hmm. you know, um, at everything. And then at one point I saw um, JJ out of one of the corners of my eye and then um, Tom and I heard him say to um, Neil, um, how, how do they walk? How are they walking? And um, because we heard that, we leapt into, into walking just towards them, you know, um, uh -huh. and things like that, because that's what Neil would expect you to do. Of course. You know, Neil, Neil, Neil is just, you know, he's like the puppet master, but he's, he's just, yeah, he's just awesome. And so, um, uh, yeah, so, so uh, you know, we had taken the heads off and stuff like that. And then, um, and, and because I think it was just for the sheer endurance, um, Neil just said, um, and give a big hand to details for just doing that thing, you know, yeah. and, I've got, and, and I've got these, these people that I admire so much and just, uh, you know, just appreciating what I was doing. I was just trying to say, well, look, you know, this is what you guys do in it. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, put the head back on, have a little cry, take it off. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, but, but then that's the magic of Star Wars. That's that's how the surreal nature of it has affected me every day. Every time I go in, every time I go in, there is something, you know. Um, every day that that I've been there or, uh, to to this date um, has been better than the next, you know, because you understand the process. You um, you have long days, yes, but I'd rather have a long day sat on set than didn't have a long day um, trying to scratch my head thinking, what, what am I going to do next? Of you know? Uh, and uh, the, was the, was and, the Kratnus head heavy? No, 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 no. It was just a synthetic foam head. Oh, you know, okay. had no mechanics in it. So um, what movement um, I could get was, was in the jaw, the same as Tom, uh -huh. but we worked, we worked out accidentally um, because we stormed the, um, we, I say we stormed. We were we were asked to to, to go in and have the photos taken for the book and everything like that. Uh -huh. And um, but we went in as the characters and 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 waddled in and all this type of stuff and we're just talking or whatever. And the the, the photographer just absolutely loved it and he was videoing and and things like that. And um, 
uh, it was, it, yeah, it was, <laughs> you know, it's, it was all part and parcel of, of just be, of being there and, and doing and celebrating, um, being involved in, in, in this, in this movie. Of course. You know, uh, how could you not be um, giddy <laughs> when you're literally walking out your dreams? Yeah, you know, and it, it was it was watching the uh, it was watching everyone getting dressed to go on set, um, which happened. I think it was the following week mm-hmm. after that, and um, that it dawned on me that I was looking at the behind the scenes footage that I was watching as a child um, straight after Sesame Street, right? And and and, and being and and, and marveling in adults playing pretend because that's what I did in the playground. Right. You know, and I thought, well, you know, people uh, are are working too hard then, you know, because (laughs) I can play in the playground, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just that level of pretense, you know, and and having that imagination. So, um, so, (laughs) so, um, yeah, so, so that's amazing. That, that was that was that moment. Then I saw R2 Katie, you oh, know, and read yes. the information about that and was so moved. And you're like realizing it's more than just a movie, you know, and Absolutely. meeting um Lee, Lee Towsy, you know, um yeah. and all the staples, you know. My my biggest um freeze moment was walking in for one of one of the first times and finding it hard to walk past R2 D2. Sure. You know. That's my my favorite character, you know, and yeah. he stood right there. He stood right there. It's him, you know. Um, and 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 Justin, Justin, um, in the in the creature shop was laughing. He says, "Yeah, yeah, that happens to me too." And um, <laughs> everybody was 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 living a dream, of course. you know. Um, and that atmosphere is absolutely incredible. And and JJ was just. You know, I'm in awe of JJ, and JJ's like this generation's, you know, um, Lucas and Spielberg, you know, sure. and and I love the way, I, yeah, I just love the love the things that he he tackles and 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 things like that. And so I was already a fan, and he was just so approachable and just just would speak to anybody and say, "Hey, I like that T-shirt," you know. Sure. It's just really cool. That's so awesome. You know, yeah, and so... it's all it's all on a Star Wars set. Which is the craziest part. Like, arguably, I mean, definitely the biggest franchise of all time. The biggest set of all time. And everyone's still just in it. You're all fans. It, amazing. It makes me so happy to know that the people behind it, especially in the entertainment industry, because it can get so, oh, this is just a job, you know, we're doing it to make money kind of thing. But Star Wars well, is different. Well, I mean, obviously there there are those those cats involved that oh, of it, it is a job, you know, that don't have that connection and stuff like that. But they know what the connection is. It's like, Someone who doesn't know too much about a James Bond movie, you know, working sure. on a James Bond movie, not know too much about its heritage, you know. Of um, and I like that, but but you know, the when when it's the creative circles, of course, you know, um, and you can see what's being made with so much pride and love. Um, the magic is still uh, there. Oh, and imagination too. So it's yeah, it, it it's. It never fails to um, to grab me at certain points, however brief a glimpse I may get at, at something they're drawing or something that's being made or, or anything like that, you know. Of course. I love that. So you did, you did episode <laughs> seven, and then and then uh, yeah. the following year they're like, hey, we're going to make another one. I know who we need. Uh, we need we need someone who knows, who knows details. You well, by one? this point, this point, this point oh my goodness yeah let's do it man <laughs> this is just after this is after jack and hyde as well oh perfect so um so it's like well i do more than just sit at the table and i and just laugh i can i can i can do the creature stuff or whatever and i can do some performance stuff if you uh-huh. need it you know um and um uh working with a company called working with a company like Deneg um on such a um high quality made tv series even if it was just for one season was was absolutely exquisite but it shows that you have an understanding of, of the realm that you're in um because also on the force awakens you know um tom and i would keep put the performance up because it was practice and rehearsal because we haven't been in the suits for long sure. but you're 
you're also um, using it to entertain the people around you. So people are looking at you like, well, of course, I'm on, I'm on Star Wars set. Wow. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you, so you know what you're giving back, even though at the even at, even though at the same time it's feeding you as well in terms of what your what, what your limits are in the suit. Sure. You know, and 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 um, you know, it was more for what we needed to do than it was to perform. But at the same time, having that kind of nature and, and spirit, I think at one point um, JJ called out called out to me and i turned around because that's where the door was where where they enter uh -huh. and uh like the hand solo and, and everybody else and um uh yes he yelled at and i turned around and he was pointing me pointing me out to some 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 little kid so i don't know if it was one <laughs> of his kids or someone else and so i start laughing and, and carry on performing and stuff like that uh -huh. but the, what, what, a, what a moment what a little gift for for that kid Oh yeah, you know, of course. That, that will remember that and and remember every time he sees that second or two on the screen. You know, it's 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 it turned into a lot of those moments. So I think that read well to say, well, look, D is a team player. He does understand um, where we are, right. and he doesn't seem to, and he doesn't seem to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest plus. <laughs> Yeah. I, th I think I, I think I had a big bigger grin on my face than Kratnus did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would argue that Kratnus's grin was made after yours. So, well done. <laughs> it's I would too. I would too. I would too. You know, it, you know are, are you Kratnus or is Kratnus you? You know, but back on the couch, D. Back on the couch. <laughs> we need to dissect this. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, but it's ah oh, you know but that's but that's the kid in me you know of just course. like you know and and getting to pretend the way that i saw adults pretending in those behind the scene things you know sure. it's all starting to read a lot lot better and um by the time i'd done jacqueline hyde um neil was certain you know um and I'd, you know whether it was jacqueline hyde or whether it was also um what i had done on, on the force awakens but he was adamant that um i was going to play um the droid you know and told uh gareth edwards this is this is your best bet for the droid and um uh this is another guy for for your imperial droids oh, sweet. you know and and the other guy was um, Nathan Plant, who got played the Imperial bug-eyed silver droid and the same black droid. Yeah, at uh, is it Scarif? Yep, yep. <laughs> so, it is. Look at that. Off the dome, I... you're getting it. <laughs> Didn't even have to pull the book out. <laughs> Dude, do you know how true that is? <laughs> so um, <laughs> and so so um, uh, yeah. There was going to, the original lineup that you see with the artist's um, sketch of of them all wearing these gray suits and this big giant green creature with this other creature on the back and this yes. droid on the end um, as a concept for how for, for where to start in in piecing together this um, this road group. Right. And so uh, I was going to be that droid, which would later on become K two S O. But the journey of but the journey of that droid was was um coming in um week in and week out for uh, for fittings for specific things because it was being made um to my specifications right and i had to be able to walk in this thing and this thing um had to be exquisitely beautiful for a close-up right. you know so it was so it was the one and only hero suit and um Gareth um, would come in occasionally and and some stuff on his on his phone to see how how I was moving, um, and I think yeah I think I, I did some dialogue did some dialogue with him at one point and, and stuff like that, and uh, then it was all about how quickly can he run, and I had been studying Anthony Daniels um, months in months in advance of, of getting the suit because of finding sure. out about it. Sure. You know, so I've, I've got to do my homework because the guy can't run like C-3PO, but he can go just to the left of that, or just to the right of that, because he's not a protocol droid. He's a tactical manumitted droid. Right. Right. So, and so, um, 
with within that understanding that spelling so within that programming of that droid um i then said well look is he a droid that's going to be out there with the troops you know having to deal with different kinds of terrain you know and you know and when there's an evacuation they have to they have to run certain point right or is he one of the droids that's in the control room and when they say evacuate they've already evacuated you right. know because if he's out because if he's out in the field, these legs are going to need pistons, you know, if you want sure. to keep the design. And so, um, you know, um, weeks went on and stuff like that, and I'm still being fit for this suit. And um, there was an original plan that um, the droid was going to blow up in a different way. Right. So there was going to be pieces, pieces uh, kind of reminiscent of the pieces we saw um, 3PO in, right? you know, um, once upon a time. And so that um, body kit was made as well and things like that. And then um, uh, then they announced that Alan Tudyk is, is doing this, is playing this droid. And you could see how they had developed it from, ooh, what kind of droid is it? It's um, what the, one of those big um, super droids. Isn't one of those super droids from... Oh, yeah, the um, super battle droids, the B2s. Kind of bulky. That's, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I set it up and you finish it. That's right. So, We're a team now. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So you could see that evolution and you could see how they needed to get it away from being a protocol type droid for from um, being an ex imperial droid. There needed to be some miss to this thing, you know, um, and, and, uh, and something different from the protocol droid. Sure. And so they went in that direction and you could see that evolution. And then I was just like, oh, okay, cool, cool. But I still had no idea whether I was going to be needed or not. Right. And so, so, so I, you know, I, I said, well, look, <laughs> you know, you don't need me, right? Am I, am I still, am yeah. I still going on? <laughs> but that's, it's you a know? constant, like I've made it. Oh no, he's coming to look. We made it. Oh no, it's coming. Uh, you've done all <laughs> those fittings. I've made it. Is, well, Alan Tudyk. Okay. I'm, oh boy. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and um finding out alan was doing it you know i know his body of work so there's no argument you yeah, know it's just like oh it's like you know, i roll I, I was part of it. <laughs> yeah you know so and but the conversation i had wasn't until i was brought to set so the ad telling me that was tell i thought was telling me it as if um there was extra news coming saying well oh the droids changed and stuff like that and i'm thinking what they don't need droid no more right. <laughs> i'm just thinking what <laughs> I've and been so, training and... for so long to be a droid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bought my own oil and everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know. you know how hard it is to go from a biological being to a mechanical? <laughs> <laughs> you just pull out a picture it's of Kratnus. Un- this was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and then, and then he said, said, said um, yeah, yeah, but you're still going on. You're still going on. And I thought, Oh, phew. Okay, so at least I still get to be. I still at least get to be in another one. I sure. Thought. And um, it was an absolute joy being on set. I um, the, the suit was made so well I could breathe really easily in it. And we were really? outside. The, the 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 visor where the where the lights are, where the eyes are, is um is all clear. So a lot of air comes in. Oh, you know. Um, I didn't know. Uh, strategic holes um put in by um neil ellison and, and toby when they um were adjusting it so that uh, i could breathe so that air would come up upwards as, as well as me breathing it out sure um but because it was pieces on top of um like a skin suit you know um i am getting a lot of the air anyway but it was um walking so you know as soon as i put on that head or whatever you know, um, I will stay in character until um, you, you you take the head off or until um, I come off set, sure. you know, and uh, walking around the set, you know, um, I was adjusting to the sand, you know, um, right. work, working out my vision, um, but, doing, but, but doing it in character because there's no point me walking around or whatever if I'm normally, if, I, if that's not how I'm going to do it when, when the cameras are rolling. Of course. And so... So a lot of that in the process and um, then you get, to, you know, and then, then run into um, a couple of the um, 
uh, supporting artists and things like that. And they'll have a chat with you or whatever. And you just keep it all improv, staying in character and, and things like that. Lots of body. And, and I, yeah, I knew it was going to be a tough thing because I knew Gareth Edwards was shooting it like um, guerrilla style. Right. So, so, so when they did place me where they placed me up on this, um, on this platform or whatever, I knew I had like a 30 minute cycle of, of business to do. And then I would repeat it again or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And things like that, just to keep that sequence safe, you know, right. until they ask me something specific. Just in case they and... saw you, they don't want you just standing there. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I think it's broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody get that L one some help. <laughs> you know, like in Back to the Future, where where I mean, he knocks out Biff and that guy, and he st- and he takes his wallet, and he goes. He goes I think that guy stole his wallet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. That's what used to happen in Star Wars. That's, That's what right. used to happen. I think, you know, um, that would be so awesome. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so so doing that or whatever, and then I got to meet the kids, and they were just improv with me because I couldn't get out of the suit, so they were talking to a droid, and it was right. so it was so magical and beautiful. I've, I've spoken about it before, but it, it really, it really was so magical because, you know, um, one kid, he stepped out of character oh, and, and one of the girls said to him, no, stay in character, you're in Star Wars. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? I need to be friends was, with that little girl. <laughs> you know? and, and, and inside, my little, my little droid heart was breaking. Yeah, right. thinking, oh. <laughs> you know? This is and, it. <laughs> um, you know, and then, um, and then, then the guys said, um, the guys, one of the cameramen or someone noticed that I was getting one well with the kids, so they placed us by one of the down speeders or an X, I think it was a speeder yeah, yeah. or an X or something like that, and we were doing business there just before the tanks were going to roll through, mm-hmm. and I think that was just an optional shot for them because it wasn't used obviously, but it was just the option that they wanted. Sure, and. Um, and you know, and I didn't appear again on set until um, uh, the reshoots for the alleyway, uh, where they they painted the, the the suit that I was in red to be another L one droid um, oh. in the alley. You know, um, you see for about a split second, you see the lights of his eyes. You know, but um, but then the movie came out, and this was the magical bit. You know, the things that I keep saying are surreal about Star Wars was that the bit they used in the movie was from um, me improvising with the children as they came running over to me. Sure. That, like, just improv, a moment of life on set is now a moment in Star Wars. Yeah, Mm. it was one of those shots that that could have ended up on a behind-the-scenes footage, you know, because it wasn't part of rolling and action. (laughs) You know, it wasn't part of that. Yeah. You know, Um, and because it was one of the most touching moments for such a short space of time on the screen, not playing the original droid. It was, it was so profoundly, it was, so, so, it it's was emotional. Perfect. It was, yeah, of course. It was, it was like, Oh my goodness. There's so much love in, in everything that has transpired for that moment. Sure. Sure. That's incredible. So, you know, so, um, so yeah, so so that so so, so that so that happened, and wow. um, you sh- you, um, you share a, a rare honor of someone who's been both a creature and a droid. I mean, it's it's pretty small club. Tom Wilton. Yeah, that's it. You I was know? gonna say Tom Wilton details. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's weird about that? What's really weird about that is you ever seen that episode in Futurama? Where Bender falls in love with with a with, um this oh this, yes this, this big droid on like the moon farm or something oh, yes. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be the, it's like me being the equivalent of Bender. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> you know, make a couple. <laughs> that is amazing. What what was harder, being the the L one or Kratnus? Um, because they're very different. They are, they are. Um, it's ooh, um. I guess I'll I'll, I'll rework it. What is the more know, taxing? Cratinus was the hardest. Really? How come? Yeah, because when we realised that we could change the expression of our faces mm-hmm. by um, putting our heads down, 
you know, and looking at the table and it looks and it doesn't look like I'm laughing until right. I raise my head, you know, um, and uh, Tom doesn't look disappointed until until he raises his head. He just looks engaged until that, you sure. know, I think that was an accident we stumbled across, which was which was a, which was a savior for me because I was keeping the head on for as for as long as I could, right. you know, um, uh, just 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 for practice. And um, uh, where was I going? Where was I going? Um, so it was more difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and so that gave me a break. So because when his head is up and people just look at me, they would start laughing. Right. And if they started laughing, I would start. I would start laughing too. But genuinely, because I don't <laughs> laugh at the face. Right. <laughs> you know, and so, so just, just, just to take a break, it's like, no, I can't look at anyone. I can't look at. I've been laughing too much. I can't look yeah. at anyone. <laughs> yeah. But then, because it's like, okay, well, I've got the laughing down. Let me just, just work on, on, on his interest in the game that's taking place, and you know, right. and things. And so I could break it up like that with, with um, L one because a lot of air was getting into the suit. Um, and it was so comfortable to wear. Um, yeah, it, it, I knew the limits of the suit as well. So I knew that I couldn't bend my my arms out totally straight and, and things like that. And I can't turn a certain way. So, so my body is completely contained in this thing uh-huh. where um, every movement I make is a comfortable one because I'm doing it within the realms of, of, of this of this suit. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So you, you, you do Rogue One, your magic moment is on screen, and then, you know what? They bring you back again, Mr. DJs. <laughs> they bring you back again for episode eight. Talk to me. Talk yeah. to me. Where's your head at? You Rogue One, you got you got the cherry on top of the cake, where a pure moment ends up on screen. How can it get any better? Oh, wait, you're in episode eight. That's how. How did, how did well, that come, bring him brought back? No, and, it's kind of like when you know when you're sharing the screen with with so many people that um, are getting their moments and working on so many different things um, that you, and you're all contributing to the same source. Sure. Um, it's it's such um, a joy to be around. You know, it's like have it's like being around so many people with one mind. You know, one goal. You sure. know, um, it's like a perfect one vision. synergy. Sounds like a Queen song. That's right. You know? <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, but he's perfectly correct. But it, it's kind of like um, coming back to that, and you're so happy to see people and um, and see what it is you're you've been gradually being um, fitted for. Um, and I think the first, yeah, the, yeah, the one and only one that I was being fitted for at first was um, Slow and Low, yes. and. Uh, he um, he was going to originally be a beach coma with his metal detector, and he was just going to look <laughs> up in the sky and see a ship flying over his head, and that's the only information that I had. That's amazing. You know, so I, so I thought, okay, it's one of those Star Wars moments. You yeah, know, yeah, so I thought, yeah. oh, <laughs> you know, um, on the, it's just on the other side of one of those wipes that they do. Yeah, so exactly. I just thought, oh. <laughs> that's right. And so, um, uh, so I was thinking, oh, this is going to be cool. And so as things went on, the costume began to change and Michael Kaplan came in and he was adding some layers and it was looking a bit more dignified and, mm-hmm. and, um, and classy um, than the three quarter length shorts he had on before and like with a long vest top on and things like that. So um, waistcoat thing. And so uh, it was then revealed that it's at, um, he might be involved outside the casino um, and it's a very classy casino and, and so on and so forth. So I was thinking, oh, okay, so, you know, he's a little bit more um, refined now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, he doesn't have yeah, to look and for so, his treasure. He wins it now. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he, he can walk around with a, with a bit more um, uh, class to him. Yeah. You know, even if even if that was going to be in his sandals. That's right, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's it. right. <laughs> he's, in, he's, in, he's in this gown and his sandals, you know. He's just, you know. He's bougie and so, as it um, gets. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then later on, there was some of these, these rehearsals. And um, it was the first time we'd had proper rehearsals. So we knew it was a big scene. Sure. And Ryan Johnson wanted to uh, have placed everybody in specific areas 
and um, for optional shots and so on and so forth. So it's better to have more stock than you need. Of course. So you can work. With and um, yeah, and in the rehearsal, I was stood there um, and uh, Ollie Taylor and Steve Kim- Stephen Kinman were operating the face um, and they put me stood next to, oh no. Right, so <laughs> back in Back into the book. Right. Um, so um, in, as they enter Canto Bite, yes, there's um, they see this yacht flying across the screen. Yes, they do. And um, it's got this. I'm nearly there. It's got this lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one talking with the one stroking his mustache. That's right. Mm-hmm. I was looking. I was looking in the wrong book. Um, <laughs> So, um, so, so, let me start again. Yeah, there's this lady, uh-huh. and um, hang on. Ooh, there it is. Uh-huh. Um, and and she's talking to this baron, and um, I think her name is Ubiala uh, Gale, Checks and out. and the guy's name is Baron Yatsa. Yes, Atman. <laughs> It's an atman. That's an atman. Um, you know, um, forgot to say what page number that, but that's the visual dictionary for yeah. <laughs> last year. And, um, you know, and we stood there and his face was being controlled as well. I can't remember who was doing that. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I was getting into the rhythm of things working out because I could see Stephen doing all the expressions and he was doing the voice. So because I could see his expressions, I knew exactly what my body mannerisms ha- had to be like if, when I was interacting with these two performers. Ah. And and it was just kind of getting that synergy with, with the person that's operating your face and, um, and, and getting that kind of bond kind of fused. And yeah, and then... Um, could you see? Uh, I could, yes, I could see out of the nostrils, but own, but not with both eyes. I could own it from, you know, out oh, yeah. one eye could see out. It was kind of like that. There was a big blank space in between where where he, that flat bit is his nose. Sure, sure. Um, and um, so, so yes, yeah, so so you're also working out um, eye level, mm-hmm. you know, and when it is how far you can turn to look at somebody. So I may not be looking at somebody, but the head would be looking at somebody. Right, and uh it's it's one of those things that it, it just becomes so natural um especially the way the way that we're being guided through it you know making sure that you understand that it's not an, an alien environment and and Paul Casey kind of makes you feel really really safe in, in doing that mm-hmm. um across the board so even if there are guys that don't need that though there are those that will be doing it for the very first time sure. you know especially um the amazing models that we had and things like that and actresses. So, um, yeah, so, so that we did a bit of that. And then, um, my scene is called up and it's the casino. And, um, I, I've been trying to figure out how he was supposed to play. Cause I've been told so many different things, um, right. in terms of giving clues saying, well, it could be like this, but think about it like that, just in case and right. think about it. It could, he could be dignified. So he could walk with his nose up in the air and, and, you know, maybe he's a bit more chilled a little bit, you know? Right. And so I, I, I range kind of prepared. Um, and so I said to Ryan, you know, is it, well, is, is this guy kind of rich and, and wealthy and stuff like that? And he says, he says, no, no, no. Think of him as, 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 as a hippie dude. Like he's really chilled out. Uh. <laughs> And then my whole my shoulders just sunk and dropped. I said, "Yeah, I can do that." Right on, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And so, um, he then says, he says, and I and he says, and, and give me the line more, like, because this was the dialogue that I was going to use for that body language, um, regard, um, in, regardless of whether we're going to change it or not. The gestures had to be the same, right, and imply the same. So um, I think the dialogue I had was, um, yeah, yeah, those are the guys. Right. Um, thing like that. And so I would say that in my head mentally and um, working with Ollie, knowing my body gesture and knowing at, and hearing him with his voice, knowing how when he's about to say something, it's right. kind of synchronizing into that because he will be saying it in my ear, uh-huh. giving me the same. Sure. You know? 
and um and yeah and steve kinman was there and and after we did it they said they kept i think they kept the cameras rolling I'm, I'm not sure but they said oh and you see um the police take out finn and rose and then there was that little jump it was like oh and then That's and great. then i walked back you know i think that was two takes really? <laughs> i think that was two takes that yeah. was such a great and, uh, moment because like somebody who's like telling on them like that's they're the shuttle parkers and then oh god they, oh oh <laughs> you know? but for the time but the synergy of that you know is mesmerizes me Do you I? know um with all with all three of us i'm um, being in sync like that and um absolutely them trust, trusting me that i can perform it and me for trusting that they can um, do what they do, and of course I trust them because they they do what they do. Yeah, you know? of course. Um, so, so you had so, you had lines given to you, or you gave lines given the direction that you were given. Like, were you that guy where they're like, "Let's give this guy some lines"? No, no, it was Ryan. The lines were set like that because it's kind of like this is the mood we want to convey. Uh-huh. The lines may stay the same or they may change, but the gestures have to um, tell the same story. Right, yeah, because you, you, know? you don't say they're the shuttle parkers and you're not pointing kind of stuff. That's right, that's yeah, right. So, that makes sense. So, you know, the man's, the man's a genius. He so, really, um... really is. <laughs> and then you watch the movie and Joseph Gordon-Levitt is voicing you. What? Well, whoa, 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 back up, back oh, up. Oh, because oh, I, oh. I, I, I didn't even know I was going to Dubrovnik. What? <laughs> right? I didn't find out until quite late that I was going to Dubrovnik. So you were on location. And then, yeah. And so, because I thought it was just a casino bit. That's you know, huge. Um, you know, and then um, while I've been told um, there could be something happening on a wall or something in Dubrovnik, uh-huh. they then said, oh, you've got to come in and help um, Aiden Cook, yes. you know, um, uh, because he's puppeteering um, Lexo Suga. And uh-huh. so I was like, okay. Um, so I was helping him because just in case he was going to be called away. Mm-hmm. And then he mm-hmm. was called away. And then Paul Casey had to coach me into operating Lexo um, with Pete Hawkins. Right. And um, because I think at the time I didn't have a monitor inside. So a lot. So I, I learned it through muscle memory. And so by the time I was on set where I did have a monitor, um, that rehearsal had paid dividends, you know, um, right. it was incredible. But um, yes, so I did, I found out that that creature was going to um, Dubrovnik. So I was going to be operating that creature. And then, oh, they've got another creature for me to play um, as someone who spots the Fathias um, as they um, break, break across um, Canto Bite. Yes. Um, a guy. Brother, let run pay. Yes. You know, uh, sounds like I'm a member of Run DMC, man. It does. He sounds super cool. <laughs> Details bringing let run pay to life. That sounds like a lyric from the 90s. <laughs> and, and he's got a hoodie. So he's yeah, all good. He does. <laughs> Who knows what he was doing out there? Could have been shady. We don't know. <laughs> it was dark. There was very, very light lit. And then there's another person there. What's going on? What's going on here? Well, yes, yes. And, and that was that was me stood with um, Claire Lawrence, the actress stunt woman. And yeah. the thing is, I didn't see out of that head at all. And really? So um, I had to, I had to get my bearings before the head was on, mm-hmm. and then um, Claire stood with me, and um, then we were giving um, rehearsal notes as to how far, wide, left or right, I could turn for for the surprise um, burst through the wall or whatever that was going to happen because they had an explosion there, mm-hmm. and. Um, I also had Ollie Taylor in my ear singing Emanate songs to me. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, just to keep me in the groove. Full circle. You know, and then... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but that was another experience because to trust, put your trust in the hand. You, you, right, you trust yourself to a degree. And then you realize you've got, to, um, comp- you've got to spread that trust out to another person and then give it to another person, mm-hmm. you know, and you're completely blind and you're on a star wars set yeah where where any minute now they're gonna yell action you know the trust and the bond that's built to do something like that as if it was nothing is is absolutely um invaluable you know um i that would that's a you know and that's a first time experience so that's another one that i kind of take away with me 
But as soon as I, I finished performing that character, I had to leg it down that hill. Oh, <laughs> no. Like, Blind? Um, um, because they... No, 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 no. I had I paid by then, but oh, I had God. to go and get... <laughs> um, to play Lexo, right, you know? Right. And um, in the steam room, um, which didn't make it to the screen, but there's a steam room scene where... Um, Lexo Sugu is is in his in his spa and he's massaging this, this guy on the table. Mm-hmm. And next to him, you've got um, oh something Ghana. What's his name? Um, a big um, huge seal like creature. Yeah, the, the water thing getting massaged like sprawled out on the table. I know That's talking, right. I know what you're talking Stur- about. Stur- Ghana. Yes. And um, I'm back to the book. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, he's, being massaged, he's being massaged by um, Kieran Shah and um, Ali. And um, inside um, or beneath Sturg in that base, you got, I have to remember, Steve Kinman on the left hand, Claire, Roy Harvey on the right, um, Robin Guyver operating the, um, the shoulders and breathing, mm-hmm. um, Ollie Taylor mm-hmm. on the tail. And and Gustav operating the head mechanics on the beast. It's <laughs> crazy how much work goes into these things. I, and I can't normally remember all the names like that. So, <laughs> yeah. um, well done, D. That, well that done. Was... And in, I just closed the book, and <laughs> and, in, and inside and inside the little pink dude, Warwick, um, Warwick Davis, his character. Yes. Yes. It's what's his. Um. <laughs> I, I, I can't even read that. Right. Um, it sounded out. Shock, shock clock. That works. Shock clock. Shock clock. <laughs> Isn't. It? Yes. Something it, like that. It Something looks like a clock. cyclops bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> Just chewed up gum oh, with your legs. The, the <laughs> thing is, the sequence, the sequence, the sequence that 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 we shot, you know, is you know you you're looking at the massaging going on. And then, then you pan up to the ceiling and you see the baddies that were breaking across the roof. Mm-hmm. And um, and as that's ha- just before the camera pans up, Warwick Davis walks across the screen huffing and puffing because the steam's too, <laughs> the steam's too much for him, you know. And he's got this little rag, he's got this little little rag in front of him hiding his shame. But I'm watching a monitor and I'm laughing because I'm thinking this is so brilliant. It is. And and. The thing with Warwick is that his performance as these, these characters, it's like, wow, you know, I'm in a scene with Warwick Davis, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's so, so crazy. You know but then, but then, and then, then you look to then you look to your right, and you're like, I'm in a scene with yeah. Kieran Shaw. I oh know. my God. legend! <laughs> All while massaging a seal thing. <laughs> in Star Wars. In right? Star Wars. So- so it's so it's absolutely nuts, right? So so that was that was that sequence, and then I had a few days. I had I think I had a day off or so because all my sequences were shot um, from the uh, from the uh, next day of of landing, mm-hmm. and um, I got to do that that sequence where I was just I had no dialogue, but I was just gesturing that some some people had had um, parked or crashed on on the beach in front of my beach house, right. Um, and then yes, and then we get to um, the movie. But before the movie, I'm like, well, what's my character called? No one knows. I don't know what my character's called. Oh, yeah. You know. And I was, and I was talking to um, Samantha Keeble because I think I was posting some Star Wars pictures and wanted to know who to credit and things. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, she she says to me, um, I'm sure Joseph Gordon Levitt's doing your voice. I'm sure I heard that somewhere. What? <laughs> you know. What? I was like. That's what I was like, and then and then I went on to Google, and I went on to Twitter, and I was I was looking looking him up, and sure enough, um, he had he had said yes, I'm playing so and low, and it was the picture of that creature, and um, do, well, he says I'm doing the voice, and yeah. I was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, and because you know I watched Third Rock from the Sun, I know I watched yeah. his career and stuff, I think he's brilliant, and um, and then um, I. Heard all the news as it was coming up from everybody saying, and Joseph Gordon Levitt's playing this guy and whatever. And I'm like, oh my, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's I'm, me. Just gonna, I'm, I'm like, no, he's not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, 
But you're sitting there and you can't tell them. You can't, I can't tell them. Like, no, he's not. It's me. Yeah, right. right like, yeah. Can't do. This is the real testament you know? of you as an actor. <laughs> You've been put through the ringer so many times, D. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, oh, this is, this is what Star Wars is. This is what it's about, you know. Right. And so, the movie comes and stuff like that. And then I leave it a while as well, um, so that that press can do what it was set out to do, obviously. Of and so, and so, um, and then I started posting. Well, now I can say that I played this character, and and then I thank Joseph and and Ryan and things like that. And the thing is, I had said to Ryan on set, you know, and it taken me, I'd taken me what about a month or two months to get around to asking him because I said to Neil, no, is it possible for me to do the ADR for, for, for that creature? Of course. And he says, I'm sure it's just, he goes, I'm sure it is. Just ask Ryan. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> go ahead. Just go ahead. Just ask Ryan. He's cool with it. Yeah, okay, you can approach him. No big deal. <laughs> and, so, and I was like, okay, cool. And I'm like, how am I going to do that? Right. So, so you start writing I'm walking your around on stuff. <laughs> Well, well, not even that because you look at the situation and you look at how busy he is. Oh, yeah. You know, and then even, and then even when he's not busy, I'm, I'm like, I could go now. Yeah. And then at that moment, <laughs> someone approaches him to talk to him about something, of and course. it's just like, okay, no, no. Of course, <laughs> you know, and it's, it was just so nothing was working. And then I thought, okay, cool, maybe in Dubrovnik. And then in Dubrovnik, it just wasn't the right time, sure, you know, and it sure. just would happen again and so just before um yeah i was on set in case i think they needed me again and um it, I, I said to ryan i said ryan is there any chance i could possibly do the adr for this character and he says yeah yeah sure of course it'd be no problem and i was like oh cool i said really he says yeah yeah no problem <laughs> right <laughs> and so right, right now this is the thing right yeah, <laughs> oh, yes. the, like like my castings it was just like I just had to ask because I know once these things go back to America, they sure. go into another realm. <laughs> go into another realm of development. I just wanted to get the courage and the nerve to ask because if you don't ask, you never know. Absol- <laughs> right? Absolutely. You know, and so and so I was all relieved and thinking, phew, phew, phew. And then as the months went on, I knew that it wasn't going to happen. Right. I wasn't. <laughs> get, I was watching no phone phone. He said yes. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Should I text him? Should I? Te- is it? Is it the time to text him? <laughs> you know. You know. And so, um, and so I thought, and I thought, well, um, someone's gonna, someone's gonna voice him. You know, maybe it's gonna be um, Mark, Do- Mark, Mark Dodson. Because I found out later on, going back to Kratinus, I found out because Tom and I were questioning him that because someone was saying they did the voices for Kratinus and Prashi and all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we were like, hang on, but they're the same sounds we were doing. It's like, but who's saying that? And we couldn't find out. We didn't know who this person was. Right. And then later on, out, it's a guy called Mark Dodson. Salacious Mark Crumb. Dodson. Yes. How yes. Do you know that? <laughs> I'm Jedi Brian D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I love, I love the Gremlins. Yeah? Yes, he's Gremlins and, as well. Dude. Yeah, and um, I'd heard um, and then I then I tracked down um a tweet. Maybe was it beginning of this year or yeah, I think it was beginning of this year, or end of last year. Mm-hmm. And um, he had done a little interview and stuff like that. And so um, I'd reached out. I said, I said, oh yeah, if you want to know anything more about Kratinus and, and things like that, to add to um his bump of information and stuff like that, just let me know or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, now that I know, now that I know who it is, right. and who to credit, and who to credit finally, and so, um, and so, but that was I was just blown away, but I was blown away by that, you know. Um, and now um, I have to come back and say, uh, where were we? <laughs> before, yeah. before I die. Joseph Gordon Levitt, <laughs> ADR. You are brilliant, All right? So, um... <laughs> I'm just copying you, D. <laughs> <laughs> And so, bless you yeah. right so you first so, <laughs> so so um i find this all out so I, i'm finally able to say i'm playing this character or whatever and stuff like that and thank everybody yeah mm-hmm. and um and i and i i knew the adr wasn't going to happen and stuff like that but um i thought who could it be but when i found out it was joseph gordon i just thought perfect perfect because from the beginning of those few weeks of filming on um canto bites casino I had come into, um, I bought the DVD um, uh, Brick. Oh, yeah. Directed Ryan by. Johnson's movie. 
and starring <laughs> so Gordon Gordon Levitt. Levitt. Yep. And, and I was completely blown away by the simple storytelling, um, the cinematography, the um, the style of noir attached to this um, uh, teenage yeah. um, homage of uh, like an investigative Dick Tracy movie or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, um, and I was absolutely blown away. I, I just thought it was pure genius. Now, at that time as well, a script had landed on my lap for some some studio wanting to make the remake of it. Oh, really? And I'm like, and I'm like, well, I'm Why? working with the actor. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, like, I'm working with the actual director, you know, and I'm like, well, okay, well, this is all right, fine. Okay. And I'd, and it was like, well, maybe I should just do it anyway. Yeah, like, because, roll's a roll. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, it was one of Ryan's, it was one of the characters Ryan had created. Right. You know, and to get to get a chance to um, embody him. Of course. Um, in a different way. I've forgotten the guy's name, but it was the guy with the limp. It was kind of like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, and, and so to, so to get a chance to do that and embody that and, and just deliver it because it was one of those characters from something that is that good. Right. You know, but I thought, well, okay, let me, let me measure my skills against that. So I learned it. And like I said, I nailed the casting and walked away and, um, I never got a chance to tell Ryan that either, but, um, <laughs> it was, it was, you know, but it was one of those things yet, <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of those things that I was, I was glad that, that it never got made and I never got the part, but I was, more glad about the chance to get into play that character for that short space of time. Sure. So it, was, it was an interesting look like if Ryan was shooting that movie and it, I was in it instead. Right. You know, how would I have done it? How would I have delivered it for Ryan? Sure. Knowing what I know how, about the context of this movie. Because at the same time, they sent the script to me thinking I wasn't going to work out who those names and those titles were. Right. Because they didn't say the title. Mm -hmm. Didn't say the title on it. And, I, and I'm like, those names sound familiar. Where have I heard those names before? And I'd heard those names associated with the movie, but I'd never seen the movie. Right. So that's even. And so, um, and um, so yeah. So so that happened at the same time, and then um, yeah, the the whole thing, and then and then realizing that Lexo Suga scene wasn't wasn't included in in that. It was just like um, it's like oh, but that was so, it was such a good scene. Sure. And then. And, and, and then hearing Pablo talk about it with such affection on, on StarWars.com when they had their little um, uh, Last Jedi explained or, or, or revealed or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And was was talking about Lexo's um, a, a chapter in the book, the Canto Bite book. Yeah. And was, was hoping that the scene will find its way onto the DVD. Who knows? Hopefully it will. Um, it It'd be just lovely for, you, for everyone to see those creatures anyway. Of course. Um, and in that sequence, that was shot because it was a beautiful couple of seconds, you know? Um, and so, um, That's yeah, so cool. there was that. And then, yeah, and just to spot my little bits, but it did take a few viewings. I'd, I'd find it very, very hard to watch myself on the screen in a, in a creature suit because uh, I've said this before that um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that's me and my brain's saying that's not you. And right. I'm saying, yeah, that, that is, that's, that's me. And my brain's like, nah, that don't look cute. I'm saying, but I'm in the suit. And by the time I've had this argument in my head, the scene's gone. Right. <laughs> you know, because, because my eyes are, lo are looking for that reference of recognition, you right. know, to what my brain is, or my, mouth, my, mouth, my mind or brain or mouth is telling. Of course. Um, but, um, but uh, I'm, yeah. I'm so glad um, that we live in an age where, like, this information is available so that the people behind the masks and the creature performers that are the magic of this character, like get known. Like I was so happy when I found out who well, you were. Then, well then, well then this, you've given me this opportunity now to yeah. say, you know, and I will be brave enough to speak on behalf of the CFX department, but we are so grateful for those that all of those that have come before us, you Absolutely. know, those people, that worked on the prequels, those people that worked on the original movies, um, those people um, who 
got George Lucas's vision and may not have known where or how things were going to turn out, but went with it anyway. Those people that completely understood the, the, the performance of the creatures, how to um, um, create a, a, a completely remote controlled um, R2-D2, um, how to get um, Anthony Dan- Daniels more comfortable in his suit, um, how to chew his suit, you know, um, but it yeah. goes beyond that to, 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 to all the other creatures, performers out there, you know, that are, are either known or unknown, but it's, having watched those movies, they are a history lesson, they are a documentary, if you want to watch them in terms of how um, visually they've evolved and and how they've gone and what directions they've gone. You know, I love how um, when I look at the prequels now, there's more of a synergy and a blend with how I see the rebels and the cartoons. Yeah. You know, um, um, because of a lot of the CG backgrounds um, or, or and things like that, that still help convey the story, but it kind of, it, it tells you it's fairy tale. It's telling you it's a past memory. Mm-hmm. When I watch them now, I imagine... <laughs> Obi Wan sat there telling Luke and says, um, "Oh, I remember the Clone Wars," and telling him that story right there and then. Right, absolutely. You know, that's, that's exactly how I imagine them when I watch them, and it's it, it the aesthetic of it then blends with the Rebels, blends with the um, Clone Wars and things like that that they've had, um, and and also as as these movies move forward, the the way that the, the love and the care and attention that's being made now. Um, but very much because of what was set in the past, you know, we, you know, we do stand on their shoulders and, and, and in some cases their shadows, but we do so happily. For sure. And you know what? There's no way I'm going to be able to top that. Can you believe we've been talking for almost three hours? Dude, dude my name's <laughs> Details, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just talk a lot. I, 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 could, yeah, I could talk ears off. This is and, back at you, man. This is the longest podcast I've ever done, and I'm so happy it was with you. <laughs> but, dude, this was fantastic. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Uh, your time, oh. your stories, your positivity, your energy and passion for something that is so important to me as well. Uh, with that, where can people find you online? Um, yeah, if, if, you're, if you're interested, man, I'm on Twitter. Um, as details. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm not sure if I might have to change that page or something to a group page or something but i'm on facebook at the moment you'll recognize um the daffy duck and <laughs> um you know uh i'm on instagram you know as details and i think it's easier to find me as digital underscore star yep um or, or details but um you, a lot of us who make these movies enjoy them the same way as i do maybe less or maybe more all right mm. but you know we have to keep quiet for so long yeah. beforehand. Then, then while the film is being made, we have to be quiet. And then just before the movie comes out, we have to be quiet, you know, and that can span a year and a half or two years, oh, yeah. you know, and then when the movie comes out, you know, um, it's like, you've got all this stuff you want to talk about. Yeah. I can talk about behind the scenes. I can talk about my appreciation for the movie, you yeah. know, <laughs> The movie, you know, the movie's absolutely insane. And it's, for me, it, it kind of like says, um, it doesn't matter what episode you think is the best. The story just got a whole lot more interesting. You yeah, know, that's what like, it, it was like, boom, when that movie dropped, it was just like, oh yeah, they're not down. They're not done telling this story yet. That's no. right. Um, and what I thought I knew about Star Wars, I, yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> they're not done telling the story. So I'm just, I'm cool with that. You know, um, same. So yeah, it's it, there's there's a lot going on. I don't even know if my, some of us are going to have our memoirs written or so. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's for me. For me, it's um like like we've just discovered in this therapy session. You know, it goes <laughs> it, it goes it goes goes very very deep. Um. I understand um, various genres um, across the board, you know, but to know and, and love this as much as I do from the ground up, it's not just the movies, it's about the struggle George had to make them, which means that if he can do that with, with very few people and very few studios supporting him, you know, 
there are there are bigger and better things that we can achieve as, as and that's tied into the fact that it's his hero's journey you know ironically you know um but it's those beats resonate so profoundly for me you know um as if you know i've always known that's how it works you know right. but one of those things that i've always appreciated you know um and there's no way yeah there's no way I can do anything like this without, you know, <laughs> giving thanks to to George, you know, but and and, and Neil Scanlon for for what that he's been giving me. It's um, like I said, it's been beyond a dream come true, and you know, I have to really hold it down when I go to work. <laughs> <You know? laughs> for sure. Well, thank you for all the work you do. I know I appreciate it, and everybody else does. So, uh, on that note, um. Congrats, friends. You made it. You made it through an almost three-hour podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. Dee, thank you so much for uh, your time and your stories and just everything. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, for anyone who wants to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this podcast so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to rate it on iTunes. If you give it five stars, it pushes us to the front of the algorithm and more people can find it. Uh, also, let me know what you thought about this. Uh, until next time, be well, friends.